Hello there. Hello everyone. We're here. We're alive. It's Saturday. Made it. We made it. Hi, who's this? <laughs> who's this here? Who's this guy? It's been a while. A bit. He's back though. Having a wonderful Saturday, nice and quiet. It's, it's Catterday. Happy Catterday, everyone. What are y'all getting up to today so far? We've had a very slow morning. This one, um, just got out of bed wet, like 15. No, I said, I'm starting stream in 20 minutes when I woke him up. So at 11.30, he just woke up. Amazing. Why, what's wrong with that? You're allowed to sleep in every now and then. Okay, I'm gonna welcome everyone in. We got Trekker. Mish says Danadians put in buffaloes in sauce. Kimmers, good to see you. Valk, good to see you as well. Blood Oak, welcome in. Hello, Michael Daughtery Fitness. And Josie, hardly toasted. It's a birthday Saturday for you? What? Like today is the day? Another year closer to 40. Happy birthday. That's so exciting. Is someone making you a cake? Are you gonna have like lots of tasty snacks today? That's all I ever want for my birthday. Just to feel a bit special, right? And it doesn't take much. Your mom is, what is your like birthday cake of choice? Cause I'm pretty sure we all have one that we like to request every year if if that's a tradition. Or cake or Oak, Oak, you woke up, you cleaned the litter boxes, procrastinated for an hour. It's just like that kind of day today. Took a shower and now we're here, yep. It's not 40, it's 30, 10. <laughs> Dairy Queen ice cream cake, nice. I loved that as like a special treat when you weren't expecting it for your birthday. So good. Like you gotta have the crunchy fudge layer for sure. Mm, mm. There's like something about that like clear like gel that they use on the ice cream cakes. Why is that like addicting? <laughs> now I want to go get one. I didn't even know we had a birthday command. Thank you, Blood Oak. Yeah, everyone wish Dr. Trekker a birthday today. Or happy birthday. A birthday. I guess it is a birthday. And yeah, Sambo's home. Oh, nice, Valk. You found all of my uh, Christmas-themed emotes. I added them for the follower versions. I thought it would be nice and festive. I know, craziness. I'm festive this year. Hello, killer, code writer, Magyar. Welcome in. Happy Saturday, friends. The 38th birthday, to be exact. Wait, that's how old Sam is. That's how old Samo is. You guys are twinning for your birthday years. Walter Mellon, good to see you. Greek. Best way to start the stream. Thank you, Greek. Yeah, you're over it. You're over the 36 month mark. Over three years being part of the kitchen crew. Dude, I wouldn't have it any other way. How's you and the fam this weekend? You getting up to any fun shenanigans? Yeah, yesterday we just like, we really didn't do much. I'm sorry that we didn't stream yesterday, but that's part of, I guess, being your own boss. There's always like that level of guilt that you feel when you know you're like not gonna be able to be there as usual but at the same time you have to like also realize you can also live your life it's allowed so yeah sam and i we just hung out yesterday literally just like spent time with each other didn't do anything crazy what did we do did we go anywhere i don't even remember oh yeah we just like got a coffee that was about it hung out at home i watched youtube samo hung out wifey says hi hello greeks wifey Good to see you. So yeah, it was wonderful. You need that kind of day. I haven't seen Sam in like 28 days before that, so it was definitely needed. And thank you everyone for your understanding too. 
Okay, so we're gonna cook up something really delicious today for Mythical Suki. Requested this with her pots and pans points. Just watching the stream, it doesn't cost you guys anything. Really fun part to like be able to engage with me and everyone else in chat is to save up those points, just watching them. I think you get a bonus if you're subscribed to the channel in a couple other ways to accrue them quicker. But yeah, if you save up 50,000, you can request me to make something special for you live on stream, and then we'll kind of coordinate the schedule so that you can be here. Suki said today was okay, so I'm sure she'll pop in at some point on today's stream. But yeah, this one is for her. So thank you for requesting buffalo fried chicken with mac and cheese, which I found these really nice gluten-free noodles at the Italian market. So we're gonna cook gluten-free elbows. Very excited to try them. And Sam's gonna eat them with me too. And I also found a gluten-free fried chicken recipe that looked really good and is actually like exactly how we usually make our fried chicken is like mostly gluten-free as we'll add cornstarch instead of flour dredge for it. Hi, Mickey. You're having a storm there tonight? Oh man. I was getting worried the, the day that I was supposed to pick up Sam on Thursday, it started to like snow overnight. I was like, oh my gosh, don't make it difficult for him to get home. But he got home safe. Stay safe, Mickey. Okay, and then a note on our chicken. So I got the chicken on sale this week. I was so happy. I got it 30% off. They were like chicken legs, let's say, whole. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Sam's actually the one that brined them. So I don't know, this looks weird. It literally looks like a science experiment. So I'll say what I'm gonna show you first. Have you ever brined chicken in pickle juice? Or heard of it? because that is what we did as another option compared to like a buttermilk brine. Hi, Bonk. Welcome in. Food. I was like actually sleeping last night when Sam did this. It's so funny. I like woke up and there was like a pickle jar on the counter. I was like, did he brine the chicken? He must have. So that's what we have. So I think I'm gonna just cut he didn't want to cut the chicken at two in the morning when everyone else was sleeping. So this is how it looks. We uh, rotated them all like an hour or so ago and it's just been like sitting out. So I wanted to show you guys. But yeah, we'll cut them up like the drum and the thigh separate just so it fries a bit quicker. It's hard to fry a whole chicken leg. I'm just gonna wash my hand really quick. It got kind of messy. He tried to like shake it, but then the brine went everywhere. So that is where we're at. It is so good though. Cause like think about all the yummy spices and like garlic inside of the pickle brine. All, all of that is gonna flavor your chicken. It's pretty magical. So if you've never tried it, definitely try it. If you're like getting to the end of your pickles in the jar. And we had like a garlic dill brine. So that is definitely one of the better ones to put with chicken. Justin Blue, what is dredge? It doesn't sound edible. So dredge is something that is like you put on the outside of things that you deep fry. For example, this is how you dredge fried chicken is you're gonna have it in a brine of some sort. First is the best way, so whether it's buttermilk or what we have today, more of like a loose brine. And then you're gonna go from there into this like seasoned flour mixture. So you have flour, salt, pepper, and like whatever other spices you wanna flavor the chicken with, or you can just keep it plain, the flour, salt, and pepper. And then that's called dredging. So you take the chicken from the brine into the flour, you dredge it in the flour, and then you kind of just like shake off the excess and then you put it in the hot oil. So a batter is something that is wet. So comparing that to let's say a fish and chips, where the fish is dunked into a batter and then put into the deep fryer so it's wet going in whereas fried chicken you actually want it dry going into the oil so that's the difference there you can also dredge things like jalapeno poppers where you put like breadcrumbs on the outside that is the same thing as like 
we'll call that breading. And then with flour is dredging. There's so many different food terms. Yeah, the hangover fried chimkin. Did you have a good week, Bonk? It's good to see you. Samo was just in here a couple moments ago. He's just waking up with his coffee. What are you playing over there? He's playing some Fallout Shelter. Okay, so that was a good explanation. And then here is the menu for today. Stream elements, you better be good. Because I already deleted this command. So if it's from last week, I'm sorry, friends. But we're having some issues every week. Yeah, okay, so that's definitely not the menu of today. I don't know how to fix that at all. I've just honestly given up at this point. But I'm just going to copy and paste what the menu actually is. What it actually is. If you guys have been here for the last three weeks, you will know that this has been like such a silly adventure. Like literally delete the entire command so it doesn't exist. And then it comes back and haunts me. <laughs> oh, and we're making a dessert today. What? I almost forgot. Better for you Twix bar. I found this recipe on Instagram from a girl that I follow and it looks really good. So I don't have a link for the recipe, but it's posted in Discord. So I'm just going to follow it from there. It's like a gluten-free shortbread layer, a peanut butter layer, and a chocolate layer. And then you cut it. I don't know. She didn't put it in there. She put peanut butter instead. No. She's crazy. Yeah, no risotto menu today from three weeks ago. Oops. <laughs> Holy. Lego Fortnite, you're playing it? Sam showed me that yesterday, the trailer for it. Is it amazing? I was like, this actually looks like something I would play. As a person who speaks English as a second language, those terms were hard to learn. I believe it. I believe it. That was like hard for me to explain it properly too, to not confuse you. When you're around Lauren, you can't say chimkin too loud. Otherwise, a certain puppy will be very interested. Luna knows the word. <laughs> Luna. Too cute. Yet it is. How are you doing? You played it too, Bonk. It's very well done. So did they add more features into the Lego Fortnite version compared to regular Fortnite? Because it looks like you can like build more of a house and stuff like that. When I was watching the trailer. Someone's car alarm is going off. Watch out. Okay, so if the menu didn't work, I'm assuming that the recipe command didn't work either. Just give me a sec. And I'll post this, click it for my own self. And then away we go. Hi, White Dove. Happy Saturday. How are you? Boom. Boom. Okay, so two recipes and then the dessert ones in Discord. We're ready to go. I think we'll start with the dessert since the chicken's already brined and like mac and cheese is pretty easy to make, but we'll make a quick little prep list first so we don't forget anything and then away we go. Now, what is chimkin? So chimkin comes from, I believe social media is there are some dog accounts that like kind of narrate, they pretend to say what the dog is saying and they'll take videos of their dog and they always like say the dog is saying chimkin instead of chicken. So it's just a running joke here on our stream. And so ever since then, we just call it chimkin. You're currently building a treehouse for it thing. What? Okay, that is so cool. That sounds fun, guys. Thanks for sharing the info on that. It just turned into a meme, honestly. You're just in the midst. In the midst of what? What are you getting up to over there? Okay, so our dessert. I'll just say our Twix bar. We'll do our shortbread. I'm just gonna make this in like a small baking pan today. You'll post when you're finished. Okay, sounds good. And then we need to have like a peanut butter layer. And then a chocolate layer. 
And I know that the shortbread crust actually does get baked. So let's keep in mind that we will have to turn on the oven at some point for it. And then every other layer after that, we just kind of chill it. We don't want to put the shortbread in the freezer too early because if you're using especially a glass pan, it will break. But I don't think we're going to use a glass pan today, so that might not matter. Might not matter. Oh, you're in the midst of your weekly battle against pet hair. <laughs> uh, yeah. Love having them around. <laughs> 60 gig download on PC in addition to the Fortnite download itself. That is nuts, Bonk. Make sure you have lots of room. It's not nuts? Hey, what's like a really big game to download? Horizon 5 is 189 gigs. Whoa. Okay, so after our Twix bar, well, we'll have to like go through this in a couple different increments throughout the stream just because we want those layers to firm up really nice so that when we cut the bar, you can see them really nice and separated. So it might take a little while, which is also a good reason to do your dessert stuff first. Think about like last weekend even for an example is we didn't do the one dessert first that was supposed to be chilled. And then we couldn't like have it till the next day. It took forever to chill. So let's not do that today. And then after that, I think we will probably make our buffalo sauce next so that the flavors can kind of marry up. Because honestly, fried chicken is pretty simple. Once you have it brined, you just have to make the dredge like we were talking about and then have your oil hot and ready to go. So that's also a good thing to think of is you want everything else ready before you plan to fry your chicken. That should be one of the last things you do. Earlier this week, you bought a piece of nostalgia. You bought Need for Speed Underground and you got it in yesterday. <laughs> I remember Sam talking about playing that game too. It's okay yet it is, no worries. I always figure out what you guys are trying to say. Don't even worry. Okay, so then after our buffalo sauce, I think we will... Let's make our mac and cheese sauce next. So we'll say cheese sauce. We'll work on our sauces. And then after that, we will cook our macaroni. We're not going to do a baked mac and cheese today. Uh, I'm just not feeling it. I'm just feeling something like really yummy and creamy rather than having like kind of like a crunchy crust on top when you bake it. Is there a new need for Speed Underground coming out? I don't know. Okay, once we got our macaroni done, then we will heat our oil up for our fried chicken. I'm gonna do this in, what pot do I wanna do it in? I usually like to do it in a taller pot. That is cast iron, so it holds its heat. I just have to dig, dig to the back here a bit, of this corner cupboard. But yeah, I usually deep fry in this one pot all the time, you can tell. <laughs> but it's tall. It has like good surface area, so you can put a bunch of stuff in there without like being scared that the oil is gonna go over. Also, it is like my least expensive cast iron, and you can tell it's been used a lot. Hi, I've done some raising in here, but it's well loved. I will say, like, there's okay, there is no chips in it, and I think that's what matters most, honestly. So we're gonna fry in that later. And then the other thing that's really important to have if you're gonna deep fry at home is a thermometer for, usually they're like combined, they're called an oil or a candy thermometer. And that takes about 30 minutes to heat up that oil. 
for frying the chicken and we want it anywhere from 325 Fahrenheit to 350 Fahrenheit. I find that once you go higher around the 375 Fahrenheit mark, your chicken's gonna get too browned on the outside before it's actually cooked through in the middle. So that's a very important thing is to have the right temperature of the oil. And then we can also say, if the oil is not hot enough, you will have obviously problems with your chicken getting crispy. And then it's actually gonna soak in a lot of that oil that's not hot. And it's just gonna be like fatty and like gross. Honestly, if you've ever had it fried at the wrong temperature, it's just not the same. Like the breading kind of falls off and it just gets weird. Your Dutch oven starting to get the stained look too. Yeah, that one is Legostina brand. That's the first cast iron piece we ever bought. I think it was only like $40 or something. But the amount of like pork shoulders I have braised in there, things I've deep fried, like the amount of fawns that I've built up on the bottom of that pot over the years, cause it's almost 10 years old, I think now, which is crazy to say. But yeah, it's well loved. As long as there's no chips in your enamel cast iron, you can like use it forever. They're so good. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. Yes. Yeah, this was, this one's for Samo. He had a hankering for fried chicken when he got home. Okay, so once we heat our oil, then we can get our dredge station ready to go while that is heating. Cause we kind of want to keep our eye on it. I honestly never trust oil on the stovetop. It's just something that is always gonna be scary. And you have to like really respect it, just like hot sugar and stuff in the house. So we always wanna be keeping our, our eye on the oil as it's heating up. And then we'll make our dredge, which is like really simple. We can put whatever flavors we want. I'll probably just throw in like some Tony Saturies or something in the flour to go with the chicken. And then lastly, we're just gonna mix the macaroni with the cheese sauce. So that's done, easy mode. We are going to fry the chicken and then up to you if you like to toss your chicken in the buffalo sauce or you're more of like a dipper in the sauce. So however you wanna plate it is up to you. I'll probably leave it We'll probably do one plate with it on this side and one plate with the chicken tossed with the homemade sauce and then on the mac and cheese. I believe that's how Suki wanted it. But if she comes in today, we will we'll double check with her. If you lose power, Mickey, you're my favorite. He's got the wine in. That's really what matters most. <laughs> Cheers, friend. Thank you. Everyone have a sip of water before we start. Mm. Okay, and then fry. And then as far as like frying time for the chicken, depends on the pieces and the sizes of the pieces that you have. Our pieces are all bone in, so that automatically tells me it's gonna take a little bit longer to cook that through. I would say around the, I mean, chicken wings are like a nine minute deep fry. And those are pretty small, right? But they do have the bone in. So I would go somewhere from like 12, around 12 minutes. We can always temp it. This is really helpful too, is to have an instant read thermometer. And then you can always just like temp the chicken in the oil to see where you're at and kind of judge the timing from there. It's pretty forgiving when you do have bone in chicken that you're deep frying is even if you deep fry it a little bit too long, it's still gonna be really moist and juicy inside compared to if you're just gonna deep fry like chicken breast or tenders. A little bit more delicate because there's no like fat or skin usually that's coating around it and there's no bone that's gonna help keep it moist. So also keep that in mind. I tried to find just chicken thighs at the store this week when I went, but there was none. So I would have chosen a skin on boneless thigh for this. So I just chose the full leg instead. I was like, whatever, same thing, but different, right? So that's what's gonna go down today. Pretty simple stuff. 
But we do have to pay attention to everything we're doing so it turns out perfect. Hi Dust, how are you? Welcome in. Okay, so first things first, our Twix shortbread. Memes of reality, thanks for the follow. I'm just gonna peek at this recipe. I have it opened in my browser. A nine by six baking dish. That's actually perfect. I think that's the size of the little pan that I wanted to use. You smelt that slap. Ah! <laughs> Here we go. This is pretty close to it. So I was thinking we'd just line this with parchment and this is gonna be like our little Twix bars if we cut them this way. Would look so good. Chicken and mac and cheese. It's just like that kind of day before we get back into like holiday themed food for Christmas, right? Skin on boneless thighs you feel are very hard to find. Yeah, it's usually boneless and skinless or you get the bone and the skin. I found them last week at this store and I was so excited and they're such a good product. So I was like, okay, hey, I'm just gonna go back. No, not even the same thing at all. You're in the middle of making a demi at the moment. Now that's a labor of love. Kudos to you for that. Okay, so we need either almond flour or coconut flour. I have coconut. One thing I have learned is if you're gonna use coconut flour instead of almond flour, just use half of the amount, which is interesting. But it's because it absorbs more liquid than almond flour. So just keep that in mind. And then throughout this recipe, everywhere where they use coconut oil, I'm just gonna use butter instead. And so this shortbread layer, our nut flour, butter, maple syrup, and a little bit of vanilla extract. We're just gonna mix that together in a bowl until the dough forms. And then we're gonna press it into the parchment lined dish and bake it for around 10 minutes until it's golden brown at 350 Fahrenheit. So this is so easy. Like we don't need a mixer or anything like that to make this dessert. <laughs> Don't turn your nuts into a flower. It's a trap. <laughs> Thank you, Bong, for posting that. I don't know why that is. It honestly makes me want to switch from like Stream Elements over to Streamlabs. Why are they being like that? And then the peanut butter. Okay, this is what they say is the peanut butter caramel, Sam. Is she does peanut butter, butter, and maple syrup. Hello? I'll grab it. Oh, you don't have to come back. I'm just grabbing the door really quick. Chat one sec. Hey. Hello, it's for Wayne. Yeah, it is. I'm just gonna take a quick picture. That way you don't have to okay. sign for anything. It's not heavy. Have a good day. Have a good day. He says it's not heavy. Surprise. Shit. It's not heavy. It's Surprise! What a legend that guy was. Usually delivery drivers, it's like a hit and miss. Either they're absolute legends or they just despise their job. Remember the one we had on the island? Yeah. The best oh, we started feeding him. He started watching YouTube. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is actually heavy. It's like 50 pounds, but I'm just strong. Thanks, Scaramouche. <laughs> Okay, and then our last layer for the chocolate's really easy. We're just gonna do a mix of the milk chocolate and the dark chocolate again, just like our banana bark last week that we made. This is like so similar to it. Just a different variation in my mind. Chocolate and butter, easy mode. Twix are one of your favorite candy bars. Feel like you're learning how to make them yourself would be dangerous. I've been trying to get into like more healthy desserts that I am able to eat. And also like things that I find if you keep it in the freezer, you're less likely to eat it as fast as you have to like keep it on the counter, right? Cause you're like, oh, I don't want it to go bad. I better like eat this up. But if you keep your desserts in the freezer and if they're like a dessert that's kind of made in that way, they'll last at least a week, if not longer. 
And yeah, it's easy to just like have it fresher that way, right? Everything's going to be fresher out of the freezer as long as it's not like a year old. Do I like tuna casserole? Yeah. I love tuna casserole. You got to make sure you have the ripple chips though on top and a good layer of cheese. Yeah, a good layer of cheese. Okay, I'm going to grab a couple ingredients and then away we go. Just need a little bowl and then a measuring cup, a measuring spoon. You've never seen buffalo sauce made from scratch? I swear we've done it on stream before. In the other house. I swear we've done it on stream before. This is a recipe from a restaurant that we used to work at. It's so, so delicious. I'm just making a really small batch of it today. But we like make a chipotle tea with it and everything. Chipotle buffalo sauce. Wait, you don't do chips or cheese on your tuna casserole? But that's how my mom always made it. And you can like change up the chips. It's really fancy if you put like sour cream and onion on there. Oof. Oof. I haven't had that in a hot minute, but I'm always down to eat it. Yeah, a chipotle tea going into the buffalo sauce. How's Annie doing today? What are you up to? Okay, coconut flour. I got the butter in the fridge. Maple syrup's in the fridge and vanilla. So coconut flour and vanilla. You just do breadcrumbs. Okay, so now you're welcome. Now you gotta go to the store and buy chippies, preferably ripple kind, whatever flavor you want. Put the chips on top. It's important. <laughs> this is like my favorite part of streaming is when we learn these things together. Just blow people's minds. Dun, 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 dun. Also, the other reason I thought coconut flour would be good in this today because like coconut is good with chocolate and caramel as well. I mean, any nut is really good with chocolate and caramel, let's be honest. But I like coconut with those flavors. By the way, you bought some measuring spoons from Sur La Table. They are super sturdy and stainless steel. I have heard of this brand before, but I can't recall what I saw with this brand. Okay, I'm just grabbing a bunch of measuring spoons and such. Any nut? <laughs> Is coconut actually a nut? I don't think so. Ah, don't scare me like that. I don't always know the facts, but I guess the fun part is us learning together, right? One cup of almond flour. Okay, I'm gonna go like, a three quarter cup. So I was just thinking like if we put a half the amount, there's not going to be that much crust. We could always add more butter. This is the coconut flour, by the way. Bob's Red Mill. Well, I just saw in the back of this package, they have a recipe for coconut flour wraps. Okay, that looks good. Don't like when it gets like caught in the corner before you close up the bag. You have to make tuna casserole this afternoon for lunch is Samovar and you're considering the cheese and nacho chips. Yeah, I could see Doritos being pretty deadly on there too. Why not? Okay, this is my vanilla. How much of this? Like a teaspoon? A splash. Just a splash. A slap? No, a splash. Oh, our rusty memories of Good Eats. Literally the greatest food show to ever exist. I'm just gonna give this a little swirl up. A splash, if you will. Aww. Chat, Sam just told me a guy that he works with 
that we used to cook for at camp. He is vegan and like just an absolute legendary human being. So I always made him like the greatest vegan meals ever. And I guess he went up to Sam and he's like, I miss Kate's vegan meals. <laughs> the best. I've actually always enjoyed cooking like vegan or vegetarian food for other people. I used to do it for a kid that worked with us too. Oh, I never even updated you guys. Oh, I'm not going back to the kitchen there. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, no, I, I got a call from my boss. When even was that? Monday? Monday. Got a call from my boss on Monday and we talked about things. And he said, I can't switch my schedule because of how the contract is set up now. So things are a little bit like more strict becoming. So he's like, it's unfortunate that like the people that have been there a while are getting affected by it which whatever, it happens, that's life. But yeah, I was like, well, if I'm gonna be on an opposite rotation of my husband, I'm never gonna see him, that's not gonna work for my life. So I just asked him to put me on, it's called Workforce, to see if I can maybe go to another camp, just for like one or two rotations until hopefully I get hired onto the mine. But yeah, that's what happened. So I will not be returning up to the goose site to go to the kitchen. So yeah, that's, that's the story, Mish. That's all I got. And then I think that as well, Annie, is I'll be much happier. Is this is also something that Sam like calculated is him working four weeks in a row like he just did is literally equal to both of us being there for three weeks at a time. So that is also something interesting to think of too. But yeah, I've been keeping my eye on the mining site to make sure I'm not missing a job posting. I'll keep you guys updated though for sure. And yeah, just remind me if I don't. Emma, you want your uh, yogurt bowl or anything? It is insane. It honestly is, Annie. This is what I made for breakfast this morning, by the way. This is for Samo. There's uh, vanilla, yogurt, chia pudding, banana, walnuts, coconut, and raspberries. What do you mean? Oh yeah, the Siggies. Chad, is anyone eating Siggies yogurt? It's like kind of a fancier Greek yogurt. It's actually so good. The goal is to get paid and the chef job just isn't cutting it. Well, once I found out, also my roommate is like leaving the kitchen where I was working in. So he got a new job. And then the one camp manager is quitting. That's actually a good human. So it's like, well, the two awesome people plus my husband are now no longer there. I don't think I want to be involved anymore. You had feta today, so you're not going to complain. Oh my gosh. A weight off of my back. <laughs> The breakfast looks amazing. I I make that like every morning almost, unless I have a hankering for eggs and bacon. Okay, how much butter? How much butter or coconut oil? Just two tablespoons? That doesn't seem like enough. Are they crazy? I need a microwave safe container here. I'm gonna go melting more butter. If there's extra, I'll just put it into the fridge. But I'd rather have like more melted than not enough. Ah, she's preparing the slap. <laughs> Scrape it off. What's 
going on over there, Santa Claus? What are you unpacking? Fishing More fishing gear? Yeah. Are you actually gonna like bring fish home to eat? <laughs> so you're a sporting man. Okay, I'm melting this up so that we can make this shortbread. Chad, I'm just bugging my roommate. He's planning on going ice fishing. No ice. Where's the ice? The snow's almost gone again. We had snow, but it's almost gone. How's the truck conversion going? The truck is chilling in storage. One thing about life where we live is winter. You can't really do much in winter time. It's really cold outside. Like, yes, you could. It just takes a lot longer. You don't realize how much you, your body slows down when it's cold out. And then the other thing is we're just saving up some money still. Okay, it's not, it's not ready yet. We still need like 30 more seconds for sure. Hi Katniss and Scaramouche. Thank you for the 13 bit leads, my friend. I appreciate you. Annie says, sounds like your roommate's a good conversationalist. He really knows how to break the ice. Ha <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of laugh you got. Whoa, I almost just boiled the butter over the container. That was scary. Okay, it's definitely melted now. So I'm just gonna use a spoon, stir in the butter until it forms a dough of sorts. I think you just write Edmonton Greek. You don't have to put the province. I am so lucky the butter didn't explode. I got scared because that's happened to me before. So one thing about like making a gluten free thing was there's no like gluten to be scared about making gluey, right? And tough. It doesn't exist. Now he just broke it. <laughs> Greek's like, I'm not giving up. Okay, this looks like it's almost there. Okay, now I'm not gonna add any more butter. We need some maple syrup. I love that they're using maple syrup in it. It's so Canadian. Two tablespoons worth of the good stuff. This small bottle was $5. So let's say, what is this? This is not even a cup. Five dollars. Nineteen. I didn't have enough money to spend like that. I bought nineteen dollars worth of maple syrup. How am I gonna get chicken? Jeez. Oh yeah, that ain't it, Katniss. We're dealing with some issues again some stream elements issues, but we are making some fried chicken today and mac and cheese. And we're making like a healthy version of a Twix bar right now for a quick little dessert. Cause we always need a sweet treat. And if you don't like lick the spoon from the maple syrup or honey, you're weird. Mm. Mm. Where you live is one Celsius. Did we get our temperature up? Yes, we did. Oh, you're in Budapest? That was wrong then. Ours came up, it's minus four today. That's not bad. That ain't bad at all. Okay, let's stir this, see how it comes together now. And that's all shortbread really is. This is actually one of my favorite cookies that my mom would make at Christmas time is shortbread. She'd do like a whipped version of it. So it was like so nice and like light. It's so simple. Just a flour, butter, sugar, and then the other version uses some cornstarch to keep 
it all together. But that looks good. Now I'm just gonna wipe this off. And then let's for sure line this first before we press it in. We don't wanna have any issues later. When we wanna get it out of the pan and eat it, you don't wanna be struggling. It's 20 degrees Celsius where you're at. That is so wild to think. And then like where Sam came from, it was already minus 30. Like it was kind of a shock to him when he got home because usually it's not that warm here. I'm just gonna use some kitchen shears to get that to fit in there better. So we might need those measuring cups later. Just keep those over to the side. Just doing it so the edge overlaps a bit so it's easier to lift out of the pan later. And then I will cut the corners so that we can press it right down to the bottom nicely. This doesn't have to be that perfect on this edge. You live in Europe though? Uh, I'm like obsessed with Europe. I think I could honestly say that. I really can see myself like ending up there at the end of my life. I loved it there when I traveled. It's just like a different way of life than North America that I don't really jive with anymore. Okay, so now that we've kind of trimmed it up, we're just gonna cut a slit on each of these corners. Kind of like hold this where it's gonna sit. At an angle like that, I'll, you'll see the magic in a sec. Sometimes I don't do it like too perfect either, but it honestly does help. Okay, let's see what that makes. <laughs> this whoring rhyme with snoring. Let me just take this, let me press it down. You'll see all the edges will line up in a sec. There. And then all I do if some of these like don't line up is I'll just like trim them. I'll say, you're not being good. Get out of there. But usually once we have our like first layer in here, this one is causing issues. Yeah, once you have your first layer in here, it's easier after that. Like I'll just kind of snip it. I don't know why this one is being weird on this side. We're just gonna do that though. Okay, I'm good with how that's looking. It's sitting in there nicely now. Put a can in there. Oh yeah, so it doesn't like, I guess I could have put this in to just hold it down so I didn't move around. Okay, now, first before we go any further, let's just turn on the oven. They say 350 Fahrenheit, but I'm gonna go just a little higher, 365, because it's not a convect. And I just have found that this oven cooks a little bit lower temp. Aw, thank you, Killer Code. Yeah, I just added those this week for you to enjoy some Christmassy emotes. Mish, you're not becoming a mod for no seconds. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna test this really quick. We don't want it to be too wet, 
but we don't want it to be too dry either, the shortbread. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this butter in. Just kind of testing to see how it was holding together. <laughs> For no seconds. The amount of cooking hacks you gained working in kitchens is wild. It honestly is, hey? And like a lot of those cooking hacks, they don't actually get talked about. I'm just gonna use this all. It ended up we needed all of it. Everything's better with butter. It's gonna smell so good when we bake this. Buttery coconut. Buttery maple coconut. What? More butter. Okay, that looks good. It smells very shortbread-esque. I will say that. Not far off. I'm just gonna spread that out first. And then from there, we'll press it. Am I gonna use my hand? I don't know what I wanna use yet to press it down. Maybe just a spoon? That works. I'm gonna go like kind of gentle at first, just to get all the edges filled up. And then afterwards we can use like the heat from our hand to give it a nice press down. And then I'm just kind of watching as I'm pressing it down to make sure that this first layer is nice and even everywhere. I guess that is one benefit of using a glass dish for this would be that you could like see through the layers, right? So you'd already know if it's even or not. But for this one, we don't really see through it. Unless you're like magical, I guess. Okay, that looks nice and even. Did I ever make chicken burgers? If so, from scratch or frozen from the grocery store? I would make it from scratch. I'm very particular about chicken in general, especially like processed chicken. So I would make it from like a butterfly chicken breast. And I'd probably do the same process that we're doing today for our fried chicken. And that's what I would turn into a chicken burger. I find a lot of the processed chicken burgers in the store these days are like really weird texture. And you don't really know where that chicken came from. So I'd rather just have like a singular piece of meat. Does that make sense? I'm sure everyone else kind of feels the same. That's such a cute little layer of shortbread. Okay, the oven is not like ready yet. I'm just gonna put it over on the side. Wait for it for a couple more moments. And then let's just quickly read what the next step is. We press down in an even layer, bake it for 10 to 12 minutes and let it cool completely. That's really important before we do the next layer, which is just peanut butter, more butter and some maple syrup. with like a peanutty sort of healthy caramel. And we actually make that in a saucepan. I suppose if we wanted to like make it a little early, just have those things in the saucepan ready to go, we could get that ready right now since we have the maple syrup and everything else out. And then same with the chocolate layer. We just have to melt the chocolate chips with a little bit of butter and then that is the last layer. You like getting your chickens whole, you get so much more out of it for the price, you really do. 
Like, as long as you know how to butcher it yourself at home, you will definitely get more yields out of getting a whole chicken. Because you could always, like, make a broth or a soup from the carcass, which is, like, my favorite part of that. Hello, Frankly Delicious. Okay, I'm gonna get a little saucepan out. I'll go grab some peanut butter, as well as the chocolate. I'll kind of get all the other layers ready for this. And then we can work on our other things. Dun, 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 dun. Hello, Dave. I hope you're doing good too. Welcome. How's the fam? We have a natural peanut butter, no salt or no sugar added. I think we'll finish these off with some flake salt as well. So I don't think I'm gonna add any salt into this layer. They say half a cup of creamy peanut butter. The twins have been unwell. No, I'm sad. I hope they get better. There's been like some weird stuff going around lately. Tis the season though, honestly, that always happens around this time of year. And hi Teddy, good to see you too. All of the peanut butter. It's you? You're the weird stuff? No. Whoa, I guess I'll just put that there. I need like a little smidgen more. Okay, that's good. You did get it this time a year ago, hey Annie? It is going around again. I think you could also do this step like in the microwave if you had a microwavable bowl. But that's okay, we could do it on the stove top. It's a whatever at this point. We already got it in the pan. There's that. There's peanut butter everywhere now. Nice! Means of reality. And another one too, like you could also use molasses with white sugar to make brown sugar instead of maple syrup. Like same, same. Good one though. Is this a cast iron pot? Yes it is. Ah, that's got to be so scary, like when your little human doesn't want to eat. It's like, what is wrong with you? You can't talk, so you can't tell me. We're doing a quarter cup of maple syrup. Anyone own any eerie cast iron pots? Why do I feel like I've heard of that brand? I will say like the flavor from the maple syrup in this layer is gonna be so good. This brand of cast iron is like Crusette. It's my one like little saucepan that I have from them. Mm. Pardon? Yeah, but this is like my saucepan, I said, that I have from them. That explains it, they say. Okay, how much butter do I need? I've had this one for almost like 10 years too. Two more tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put the 
crust in the oven and let's put our timer on. 10 minutes, easy mode. Can't afford to walk in their neighborhood. I mean, I don't think I could afford to do it now, but 10 years ago I could when the world wasn't like this. <laughs> it was nice to treat yourself back then and I'm honestly happy I did. Yeah, you missed the bus, no! <laughs> A peanut butter maple syrup sauce, that sounds good. Let's do like that. Peanut butter caramel. I'm so intrigued. I gave Sambo a try, a bite of the banana bark, the frozen banana bark we made last week on stream and he loved it. Just like me. He's like obsessed with it now. I didn't expect it to be that good. Okay, so that's just go over to the stove top. I'm probably gonna switch this spoon out right now just for a spatula for later. Just be easier. Metal spoons and enamel cast iron and no no. Well, let's go to a silicone option here. Or you could use a wooden spoon too. I always find like peanut butter in a wooden spoon kind of absorbs the flavor. Sometimes I bake for other people so I just don't want any cross contamination. That is definitely not right. I'm just gonna turn that off really quick. One sec. One sec. Just causing me issues today. I just turned off the commands chat so you didn't have to deal with that anymore. I don't know what's wrong with stream elements. Okay, so let's just pop over to the stove for now. And then the next one, I'll go grab chocolate in the container. Yeah, exactly. A microwave safe container. And chocolate. Chocolates. Who was that? Thank you, Annie, for the 487 bitties. I just made you have some hot chocolate. We made such a yummy one. Was that last week, guys? Or the week before? Now I can't keep track anymore. But it was so good. So I believe they said one cup. One whole cup of chocolate. One cup of chocolate chips. They didn't specify what to use because there's like different types of chocolate out there, right? So this is a milk chocolate from Calibo. And then this is like a cheap kind of baking chocolate that's always good to have around. So semi-sweet chocolate chips. Go like half and half. I'm just doing this so it's neither too sweet nor too bitter from the dark chocolate. Hello FCD, welcome in. With a Ben's Dork cocoa powder. You need to try it, Annie. I need to try it. It looks like I need to invest in some Calibo again soon. Pack it in there. There's no skimping. And so then we just add a little bit of butter into there as well. Yeah, I like to always try to balance out the flavors of my desserts. And like the fact that they didn't specify what kind of chocolate to use, it's just like chocolate chips. Well, I know there's different 
varieties of chocolate chips out there now, right? Like maybe before there was only this one kind. Is this two tablespoons as well? Yeah, the cheap chocolate totally bloomed, Mish. You see that? Just a tablespoon actually of butter in here, so not too much. We'll go with like that and that should be good. So yeah, the cheaper chocolate has bloomed already, but it's good till like 2025. And then the Calibo, which is actually expired, looks perfect still. So you tell me what's quality and what's not. And we don't need any more maple syrup for this, so we can put that away. Sweet. Okay, I'm gonna bring the parchment as well. And then we're rolling into our homemade buffalo sauce next. So I might return also with some ingredients for that. What is this cake called? Yeah, I didn't list it on even the title today. We're making like a healthier Twix bar. I can't post the recipe, I don't think, unless you have Discord. But this is what I'm reading off of. Oh no, that's a really long link. But yeah, it's posted in Discord if you search it up. I believe it's called Better For You Twix Bar. I found it on Instagram. That's why the recipe is weird. Did I find the recipe or did the recipe find me? That really is the question. Okay, I'm in my like hot chili area here. I'm grabbing some dried chipotles. Dried chipotles. What do we got on our timer? Cause I'm starting to smell coconut smells here from the oven. Couple moments only. We'll get our hot cloths ready here so we can take a peek. Let's just move this over for now. That's our last layer. Discord was good, okay, perfect. And there's also a photo posted in there too. So these are dried chipotle peppers. I don't have a recipe for this either. Let me just check. I believe once upon a time I typed it up as a PDF. It is. So Chipotle Buffalo Hot Sauce is in Discord as a PDF if you search for it. I'm honestly just gonna like open it up for myself to reference. It's been a while. So you need a buffalo sauce base. is also something I'm trying to use up today. So I had these extra in the fridge, but usually I use like a Frank's Buffalo sauce, just a bottle of it. And then we need apple cider vinegar, dried chipotle peppers whole, lime zest and juice, garlic, and cumin. And so we're gonna make a chipotle tea first. With this, we just need a small little pot. So I was being strategic about like which pot I'm using for what. Yeah, cumin, this is so, so good. Like this was our buffalo sauce that we served with chicken wings at a brew pub that Sam and I opened and people went nuts for it. Yeah, human, not cumin. So let's do, cause these are kind of like all broken up. Probably go like that. Cause we're making such a small amount. And then we're just gonna cover that in water. I'll go like that amount. And then we're gonna put that on medium heat. 
And we're gonna cook that until the water has reduced by like at least half, I'm gonna say, if not more. And then during that process, the dried chipotle peppers are gonna soften up too, so we can blend them into a sauce. Let's just take a peek back here. It's golden brown and delicious looking. The edge is really browned up, but it actually looks so good. So that's done. Let's see if I could show you a bit more. I wouldn't go any uh, longer. Look, it was like almost burning. And that's something that I think we have to like learn about nut flowers. We can turn the oven off now. Cause like they'll kind of burn faster. This recipe is also on Discord, yeah. Here, I'll put the title in chat. But you can just use the search engine on the top right of Discord to find these recipes. Nice, welcome in friend. I mean, we have almost six years worth now of recipes in there. Look, you can see the color coming out of the pepper already, just sitting in the warm water. So let's turn that on. Move this over. Our big old frying pot. Put that on medium heat. I'll just show you where it is on the stove over here. Dun, 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 dun. That's where it's living. So we'll go check on this in a bit. I'm just gonna pop our crust onto this trivet so it cools off a little bit quicker. Like that. And then in the meantime, we can put all the other things for the hot sauce into the blender base and get that stuff ready. So that when the chipotle tea is done, we can finish it up. Nice, with the new Discord update, I am enjoying that, I will say, their new update. It's a global search across the whole server. So whatever has those words in it is gonna come up. So yeah, sometimes you have to scroll a little bit. There's even like pages worth. But hey, what a good resource. Okay, next up I will return with some cumin as well as the blender top. Then we need some fresh garlic and lime zest and juice. I thought it always searched the whole thing too, but maybe not. So our cumin. The recipe on Discord for this makes a liter, which we're not gonna make that much. So I'm just gonna like put small amounts into this. So like half a teaspoon of cumin. Cause it's quite a strong spice. You don't want the entire hot sauce to just taste like cumin. Not human. Okay, and then I'll just shake up these little sauce bases. Literally what we are given if you get like hot wings. Ooh, maybe it was the mobile update only. I wonder. Now I'm intrigued. Oh, the other day there was like 10 of them there. I don't even know what they were doing, but I loved it. Yeah. They're like, hey, we got them all. Where's our treat skis?
garlic, garlicky bits. Do I have lime still? Yep. Got worried there for a second because I didn't buy a lime this week. But I thought I had a whole one, which I do. Okay, I'm just gonna move this over there for a sec. Okay, our fresh garlic cloves. Obviously, this is a pretty strong flavor, right? And I always find like if you blend garlic into a sauce, it gets stronger as it sits together. So let's go like with these three garlic cloves. We'll just peel them up, give them a crush and pop them in the blender. Kind of dark. Lighten it up. We're just gonna take our knife Hold it on there and give it a smash. You love garlic? Me too. Last week on stream, we used like so much garlic. Pretty sure I used three heads of garlic in like two streams. <laughs> it was awesome. And it's good for you. It's always good to have fresh garlic around. Not the jarred mint stuff. That's not fresh garlic. That's preserved garlic. Hi, Shutterbug, how are you? No, you need the fresh garlic. Cause there's good properties like in the skin, I guess, of garlic. So that when you smash it and like the skin is on the part of the garlic that we eat, those nutrients are released. So it's actually a good thing that we do that. I don't know, I saw this online like a week or so ago. Like that's so interesting. Smitten Kitchen's 44 garlic soup recipe. Yeah, garlic is trash, thank you very much. You just made three hot chocolates? It's damn good. I love it and thanks for using my emote. I'm just rolling this so we get lots of the juices out. Have you seen Alton Brown's, what is it, 40 clove chicken? Is that the recipe? 40 cloves? 60 cloves? 30? I don't know, because we never actually use the right amount of cloves. But anyways, Alton Brown's garlic chicken is life-changing. If you have a bunch of garlic to use up. Okay, I'll show you what this is doing over there. It's doing stuff. It's cooking, so we'll keep our eye on it. 40 clove, it's so good. It is so good. I think it's 40 clove chicken. I'm just grabbing a microplane. We gotta zest the lime before we juice it. That's an important step. Cause like a lot of the lime flavor comes from the zest, not from the juice. You'll get a lot of like sourness from the juice, but the like lime flavor, aroma, is all from the zest. Thank you very much, Clem. Subscribing for 28 months in a row and just flying over the two year mark. How is your weekend going? I'm gonna zest this whole lime. I'm feeling limey today. Yeah, right, Bonk? That's why I was like, is it 40? Is it 60? I don't know, because we never even used the set amount that they called for. We always added more. The next time you did it with 80? I love it. Okay, that looks good. And we're just gonna tap it into there. Sometimes I go like this too, if there's like a little bit Extra, and then I always rinse this after I use it so it doesn't get stuck in there. Because if it dries on, it's a pain in the butt to try and wash off. Okay, now let's cut this open. Mmm, so juicy. Thank you, Annie, for the 500 bitties. He evened it up to 32% of the way through our bit goal. 
contributing to our solar system for the truck. Which is so exciting. We're like almost a third, it's true. How does garlic taste like? It tastes like sour garlic. And kind of like weird, funky. Yeah, like a salty vinegary brine, exactly. Clem, you're starting to study for finals. You wanted to stop in first. I appreciate you. What is your final test called? Is this like the end of your schooling too? Or do you have a little bit more after this? Is this like the final final? I'm just gonna wipe this. Jarlic tastes like sadness. <laughs> what kind of food truck? It's gonna be uh, like a mobile commissary kitchen. That's what I want to call it. That is gonna be the gist of it. So it's not gonna be operational every day on like the street because there's a lot of laws here that make it hard to do that. So yeah, we're gonna build a commissary kitchen in the back of a box truck that we already own. It's just sitting in storage right now. And we want to first like drive it around Canada and take like a road trip. And then we also want to like use it to book special events like uh, different festivals in the summers, weddings, things like that, pop-ups at farms, do farm to table dinners because I don't like to waste my time in my life. And I always find like, if you have an operational food truck that sits at a location, well, you're always waiting for someone to come to you. And yeah, I just hate wasting time and food in general. So that is our idea of that. And we'll still always be able to stream in it. And there's gonna be like a separate small living quarters so that we can travel with the truck on stream because uh, like the whole basis of it is to also meet a lot of you guys as viewers around the world. So we're building it to be capable to also go to Europe, which is really cool. <laughs> no one wants to boost it. It's okay, Annie. <laughs> Scaramouche, you talked, you talked them into it. <laughs> Oh, we even got a hype train. Thank you, Scaramouche. 101K, this is for you then. Choo choo. That's my train sounds. Won't even complain. I'm not. We unevened it out, but we're still happy. <laughs> okay, we need a couple more ingredients in here. I think just like vinegar. We got the buffalo sauce. We don't have the apple cider vinegar. The chipotles are on the stove. We got the lime zest and juice. We got the garlic and the cumin. Okay. So just a little bit more acid. And then the tea. And you can really decide like how acidic you want your hot sauce. One thing I will say, and holy shit, Kimmers, thank you. 1,009 bits. She's like, take this, take it. Thank you very much, Kimmers, for that. You guys, level one complete on the hype train. Let's go level two. That's a choo-choo for all of you. How do you get a food truck from Canada to Europe? You put it on a boat. So you gotta drive it to the east coast of Canada and then you can put it on a ship. And where does it go? To the UK first? It goes to the UK, to a port. And then you just like fly over, meet your truck there and drive it away. Now it sounds really easy. There's a lot more to it than that. But that is something that we know of just from watching other creators live their life like that. <laughs> you teach it how to swim. That's a very 12 year old thing to say. 
Thought it might go to a port in Ireland. Maybe they've changed it in the last couple of years, but a couple that we watch from Canada that did van life, they met their van in your or sorry, in England somewhere in the UK. But then they also had issues because they had propane in their van, which we're not gonna do. So yeah, that's something to also keep in mind. That's right. What's gonna happen when Kate's gonna be doing the drive-bys with her food truck? You'll just be walking down the street, minding your own business, bam, hit in the face with feta cheese. Can't even be upset. Thank you very much for the seven bits as well. Did they marry their van shortly after? Annie. <laughs> You guys are nuts. Thank you, White Dove. Okay, while it's going, I'm gonna pour in a bit of vinegar. Like a small amount. That much. You can always keep it in the back. Done with that. We're almost there. We're almost there. I think we made it. Phew, White Dove. Thank you for the 76 gifted subs to our channel over the years. I appreciate you. And it's also fun like seeing names that we all recognize in chat getting the gifted sub. So Alti, who is Canadian as well, Oiliana, Endless Tessellations, Wavec, as well as Crux. Welcome back to the crew, friends. And thank you very much for the level three on the hype train. True, true. The bigger the vehicle, the more it will cost to ship to Canada or from Canada to Europe. Annie. Annie. And some more? How are we already at 9 out of 10 on the sub goal? Stop it. Welcome to the kitchen crew, my drops ill, as well as tall homie Joe. Welcome. It's great to have you, Annie. Thank you for being as generous as you always are. But yeah, it's like a couple thousand dollars to ship the the truck or van or whatever vehicle you have over to Europe. Maybe over the years, it's also increased in price. I don't really know, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, 835. I mean, it's almost been six years, so there's that. Palooza, hi. How are you? Okay, should we peek at the stove? I haven't been looking. Whoa, things are cooking. We're not looking, so it's cooking. It's almost there, actually. Because, like, you have to think the chipotle, when we blend it, is going to make the sauce a bit thick, too. So that's why you want to have a little bit of liquid with it. Mish! Holy! It's a lot of chicken wings. But we actually have chicken and macaroni today! <laughs> Mish, thank you for gifting the sub to Fox Bear, as well as anonymous gifting the sub to Can One Do a Thing. I believe he can. Yeah, you're going to Costco. Why are you going to Costco? Okay. We need hot dogs and bologna so we can finish up the song for stream today because you guys are just crushing it. <laughs> I'm gonna peek at our crust back here. Oh, it's almost cooled. So you know what I'm gonna do then? We're gonna turn this on. And then what? We're gonna turn this on. It smells like spicy bits over here. Thank you. Another anonymous gift in the sub to Ted I Am for six months in a row. We gotta roll it up to 20. We're rolling up the rim to win.
I mean, that's one way to think of it, Tucson. The paperwork to get the approval for the truck to go to Europe will be a nightmare. Or you could think, it takes a little time, but it's definitely worth it, is how I'm gonna think of it. Annie, thank you for the 83 bits. And what the heck, FCB, a thousand bitlies. Annie asked for a 33%, you give him 34. Take that. Oh my gosh, roll up the rim, the R's. I can't roll my R's though. My tongue's weird, Mina Rose. Roll up, see, I can't do it. It's impossible. It doesn't work like that. The boys can probably do it in the background though. Lady Grey, thank you. Welcome to the channel for 15 months in a row. Whoever gifted this sub to you, sneaker. Anonymous, whoever you are, is being super generous, you sneaker. Sounds like everyone's having a wonderful weekend so far. I could never live there. You actually roll all the letters. No. Will you accept me as your Danadian that can't, though? Okay, this is actually, like, bubbling, so let's stir it. We just need this to emulsify together, let's say. Our peanut butter caramel layer with the maple syrup. And then we pour it over the shortbread. This is such an easy dessert, I'm loving it. It's almost there. This is where we're at. It's almost smoothed. Smoothened. I'm your role model. <laughs> okay. It's done. We did it. We done did it. Okay, come back. We're switching it up. We're switching it up. They'll ask you 50 million questions why you don't, or why you want a food truck in Europe. I've traveled in Europe before and they've tried to scare me. And I'll just say it, it's, it's not gonna work. And yeah, it's actually not an operational food truck. So that's the whole basis of that one. Okay, so you just have to be careful when we pour the peanut butter layer in that we don't like pour it around the edge there. So look at this, it's like sizzling on up still. That's how it came together. Peanut butter, maple syrup, and butter. And so it said you gotta have the shortbread layer completely cooled before you pour this, which we do. I made sure, I felt it with my hands. It wasn't hot. And so then we'll also have to chill this layer next before we do the chocolate. You can't try this yet, it's not done at all. Or you're just trying the caramel. Oh no, chat, this is what I said not to do. Ah! Okay, Sam, you have to get that piece on the outside if you're coming over. Get the piece on the paper, you have to help. Thank you. Okay, now spread this out. Yeah, it's good. It's a peanut butter caramel. It's healthy-ish. You know what we could do though? If this is like making you upset, you could literally just stick it onto this side so you don't have to hold it. Life hack right there. Yeah, you'll be able to lick the spatula, don't worry. That's a really thick layer of peanut butter compared to the crust. Holy. Thank you for gifting the sub as well, FCB. I forget if I said that. I got excited for the peanut butter. Yeah. 
You're like a lamish. Europeans can be scary, but don't worry. Thanks, friends. Look at the names at the top. You and your 1000s. We got all the level 3 emotes. Level 4, 41%. 13 subs, 2,700 biddies. I appreciate all of you, and so does Samo. This is a healthier Twix bar. There's a layer of shortbread underneath, because I have a wheat allergy. And then we just did a caramel peanut butter layer, and then next we're gonna cover it in a chocolate layer. What are those things? Those are the gluten-free muffins. I haven't looked at it in a hot minute, but you definitely need butter with them. They're pretty dry. Bonk is hard at work tonight. I know, cause Stream Elements isn't there for us. Okay, so this is the base of a hot sauce that we're gonna make. And I believe I am happy with how this looks. And this is a Chipotle tea. I'm gonna steam you up here. So this is dried chipotle peppers. We just poured some water over top and then got them boiling on the stove top and cooked down the water until this point. I always like to first just scoop out the peppers and put it in the blender and then we can pour the liquid as we feel we need rather than it going like too watery of a hot sauce. Yeah, I know. I have my spatula cleaner back. It's wonderful. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Hi, Shacht. How are you? Okay, I also need to just grab the blender top. Or sorry, bottom. You know, the bit that blends the things just got home from the pew pew range fun yeah what were you shooting katniss i loved when sam's dad brought me to the pew pew where's my lid there it is okay there's like nothing in this blender this might be a little bit of a tough task here Sounds that took me to the pew pew. <laughs> there was no range, it was the forest. <laughs> she shooted some snacks, nice. Okay, I'm just gonna start this on low and then turn it up. Might be a bit of an adventure on this one to get it smoothed. That's your view, you're welcome. The shortbread and the long gun. Let's shoot, shoot some shit. A 22 pistol and a long gun. <laughs> Smelling very floral already. I'm gonna add some liquid now. So that's what happened. We just like spread the sauce all over the blender instead. Yeah, what's a long gun? I don't know what the heck is a long gun. Action, semi Us Canadian folks would like to know what a long gun is specified as. It's just a rifle. <laughs> it's just a gun, but it's longer. <laughs> How long is it? It's just a rifle. So like a hunting rifle? Yeah, a not handgun. <laughs> We're all terrible. <laughs> We're actually the worst. A not shortcut? Yeah. <laughs> Can't be short. We definitely know that. <laughs> Katniss is like, I hate you all. I'm leaving. <laughs> See you never. <laughs> this is smelling so delicious though, holy. Look at like how dark it goes in color too. Deep, dark, and delicious. After this, we're making the cheese sauce, so don't even think about going anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna taste this. See if we have to like add anything to it. 
I'm going to add a little bit of the chipotle tea. If you guys were wondering why you hear guns, my roommate's also shooting guns. We are all at the shooting range today. How many types of cheese? We can do two, I think. I'm gonna crack into the marble cheese. Just wanted to stir in that tea a little bit. Of marble. Whoa! It's pretty acidic. <laughs> But the flavor is really good. Okay, I just want to add, I think I'm just going to add like a little bit of honey to it. But like the hot flavor is good. It's not super spicy that like you can't keep eating it, but it definitely warmed me up. Like you can see my cheeks are a little bit red after. Yeah, what did we say chat when we looked up what marble cheese is for Americans? Is it like a Colby? Or like a, yeah, a Colby Jack. That is what our marble cheese is. You'll see. It literally looks like a piece of marble. Just orange and white cheese. I guess you could also add maple syrup into this too. But I like the honey in the hot sauce to go with like the lime and the peppers. It's just better. American cheese is plastic, but so delicious on a burger. Let's go like a tablespoon worth. And that's why I said you can choose how much acid you want to put in your hot sauce. And what the acid does is it actually makes it taste not as spicy. Pouring vinegar directly from the bottle is always a bold move. I also shouldn't have put the entire juice from the lime in either. I should have done half, but I hate like having a half piece of lime in the fridge. So like I could have probably gone without even adding any vinegar, but that's just like the fun part of cooking. Just trying different things. I've never made such a small batch of this before. So now let's see. Nice little low and slow. Cause like lime juice is pretty acidic, right? This is the buffalo sauce dust. I'm gonna turn it up more to get it smooth. I'm gonna be back out and grabbing a bottle to put this in while that's working. if there's like a couple peppery bits around. Okay, don't put the blender away yet, just in case we do want to taste it up, doctor it up one more time. But yeah, we definitely got the consistency where the sauce is gonna like stick onto the chicken when you dip it in. It's not just gonna run off of it. And like breathing this in, it kind of makes me cough. So I definitely know I got the spice level right. Like it will taste better as you let this sit too. And then as well we can say is the longer you leave like a hot sauce in the fridge, ones that you make like this, the more they will mellow out and actually become less spicy over time. So that's an interesting thing to think of too.
Yeah, I thought I'd just show you a hot sauce where you can like put a dried pepper into it. Try something different. That was perfect. That amount of honey. It doesn't have that acidic bite anymore, but it has like the spice on the tip of your tongue, which is really nice. And you still get like the flavor of the garlic and the lime and the cumin. Yeah. The honey almost like brought those flavors out more. Honey, honestly, for the win. It's one of my faves. Especially for like sauces or dressings. Now we're just gonna pour it into this glass bottle. I forget what this is from, but it's like from a store-bought sauce. And then I just wash the label off and I like to keep a couple of these around in the house to use for things like this to put in the fridge. And they just stay better. Pouring without a funnel. That's some risky business. Ooh, there's a couple like really good garlicky bits I just seen. They're sneaking on the bottom. I just gotta scrape this. We made like half a bottle worth. You gotta love seeing like all the pepper seeds in there. That's how you know it's real. Some of my least favorite hot sauces are the ones that have pepper extracts in them. They're just like overly spicy to the point where you can't really taste much else. Which is like disappointing really. I'll always choose a hot sauce that is just like naturally made. Okay, definitely wipe that off of the cutting board. And if you made like a little mess on the bottle, just rinsing my cloth out. You got in back in the balsamic phase again. Yeah, I used balsamic. Was that last week when I made like the bacon balsamic vinaigrette, which I still have in the fridge. So good. Okay, so that can just go in the fridge now. We're like cruising through stream. Look at that. I know the back of the bottle looks gross. I guess we can just give it a little shake. That's our buffalo sauce though. Look at all the seeds you can see. It's real. It's real. Boom. Sweet pineapple chili sauce, yum. Okay. You'd rather taste the hot sauce than feel the burn. And like, we have some pretty spicy hot sauces here. So that's how you like learn the ingredients they put in, what you like and don't like, but you really have to like try them all. Okay, so our Twix, just going off of our list because we haven't really looked at it since we wrote it at the start of the stream. We did our peanut butter. Our next layer is our chocolate on this like homemade chocolate bar, but this is pretty warm right now because this layer just came off of the stove top. I'm just gonna pop it in the freezer while we work on the next thing. So that can chill up. We made our buffalo sauce. The next one we're gonna make our cheese sauce. And then I think at the same time, we'll probably put our water pot on the stove for our macaroni to cook next too. Pineapple and hot sauce is money. Yeah, so is mango, like mango habanero. Yes, please. You wanna see Sammy? <laughs> He's playing games in the corner of the room in his comfy chair, but you'll probably see him soon. Get him in here. Hello? Okay, I'm just gonna post this really quick. The recipe for the macaroni and cheese. 
That's what we're making next is the sauce for it, our cheesy sauce. So you start by making a cream sauce and then you just mix the grated cheese into there. I'm using gluten-free noodles, but I don't think I'm gonna make this sauce gluten-free. Is it possible to turn that down like two notches, please? Just so I'm not like yelling. Thank you very much. Okay, so we need elbow macaroni. Like I said, we'll put our water pot on. And then for the base of any cream sauce or cheese sauce, there's Sammy. Is you need butter and flour, which makes a roux. And that is what is going to be the thickener of our milk. And then to the roux, obviously we add our milk. And I usually add a pinch of nutmeg, salt and pepper. So we season our sauce and then we just mix in at the end our grated cheese this is the goods this is the goods you looked into his eyes you should know better by now your lunch of buffalo mac and cheese wait did you actually go out and get it today cat the mac and cheese was sad and bland and too watery why would they do that I'm so sad for you. Well, ours is not going to be like that. And uh, we're not going to bake this today. It's just going to be a really creamy stovetop mac. Nice and nice and easy. So yeah, we'll get our butter and flour out. We'll measure out our milk. And then we need our salt and pepper. I like to do nutmeg. That's something we're taught in culinary school. A traditional bechamel mother sauce always has a pinch of nutmeg. That is the biggest piece of cheese ever. What the hell is wrong with you? Have you never had cheese in the last 28 days? Did you see that chat? No one's, no one said boo about the size of that cheese. Jesus. Jesus rice, if you will. That's a serious chef snack. Okay, you guys did see it. You just didn't know what to say really. They're in shock. Oh my God, does he even need mac and cheese? Just give him the noodles. It'll make itself in its stomach. <laughs> White Dove silently shaking her head. Like they know. It's like, oh, Samo's home. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Walter Melon. There really is no such thing as too much cheese. Bechamel's potatoes are so good. That does sound good. Bechamel is good on like a lot of things, hey? Okay, so we're gonna start making this and then probably while the sauce is like simmering because you gotta cook out the flour so it's not starchy tasting, we'll grate our cheese. Take the cheese. We do like cheese here as well as garlic, if you're not aware. Okay, so they said for about one and a half cups of macaroni. That sounds pretty accurate to the amount we're gonna make today. So I'll follow the rest of the recipe amounts. Usually I don't when I make a bechamel, but today I'll measure it out. That was your face in shock? Yeah, that's my dead face. Like, what? You like cheese? It doesn't like you? That's like me and wheat. I like wheat. It just doesn't like me. Okay, eat it up. Open it up. Look at how like vibrant that looked when I held it up. Okay, we need a pot. We'll go over to the stove top as well. Ray's world, thank you for the follow. Let's use what? I think we'll use a medium pot to make the sauce and then we'll have to boil the noodles in the larger one. So we'll just make our small amount of cheese sauce in here. We are making a lot of dishes today, chat. Who did this? Who did this? I'm just trying to keep them all organized as we go along too. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go grab a little bit of the flour because that's one of the first parts of the sauce. And then we'll get our butter in there.
Is this real cheese or did they put beta carotene in it? They use a natto in it. So no. I would say like a lot of this type of cheese, like I call this like cheap cheese. A lot of the cheap cheese in North America is not real, it's colored. And that's why that doesn't exist in Europe. <laughs> okay, so you need three tablespoons of butter and then two tablespoons of flour. We'll get that melting and then we'll measure out our milk. And natto is weird by itself. It is. It's really good for marinades and stuff though, for like Mexican foods. Classic bechamel, brown butter and flour. I mean, we weren't taught to brown the butter in culinary school, but you could definitely go that route if you wanted to. <laughs> Mine's usually about halfway there anyways. It was a good cheese snack, Samo. Nice. Hey. I'm just getting you guys set up. On this other camera. At the stove and then we'll start cooking. Ta-da! Okay, I'm gonna turn that on to like a medium low heat, let's say. Is this a better view this way? I think so. There. Okay, medium low heat to start. Just gotta melt the butter. I mean, beta carotene is probably better to add than a natto coloring, which is cheap, right? Okay, just use a spoon to measure your flour in, and then we will need a whisk. That one's important for making cheese sauce. You need a whisk. You gotta whisk it. Leave that there. Whisk it for the biscuit. Turmeric? Yeah, turmeric would go grainy. That's true. Interesting. <laughs> You're grainy. The turmeric, like how is it grainy? I guess you don't realize it, but like if you put it into something like cheese, I don't know if the turmeric would agree with all of the things in the cheese. I wonder, because of the fats, yeah. Kinda wanna buy a grain mill and grind your own buckwheat groats into flour. One uh, YouTuber that I follow, she's like a homesteader. She just got a grain mill and started what she makes sourdough bread like almost every day and she milled einkorn berries for the first time and like made the most phenomenal loaf of bread ever so it could be worth it annie and at least you know like where your flour is coming from I do love my mill. It's so handy to have. Okay, that's almost there. How much milk do we need? Cause that's one of the next things going in. One and a half cups of milk of any kind. Can we have a chat about how expensive milk is nowadays? Cause this was $3 for one liter. <coughs> I was gonna buy two liters of this but I didn't feel like paying $8 for two liters of milk. So one and a half cups. I'm gonna 
go get a little container really quick and then I'll come back and put the flour in the butter. So that flour or the butter is like kind of browned anyways. That's usually how I do it. But I was saying like that is not, you don't have to do it. That's not how we're taught. Three. And then we're gonna whisk that until it makes a paste. And like I usually make a pretty thick paste. This is like really loose. Cause like you can still stir it. That's how I've been taught. And that's why I honestly say, like, I usually never follow a recipe when I make my bechamel. Okay, now it's a bit thicker. I'm happy with that. And then the next step from here is we have to add the milk slowly so that we don't create lumps. I have a 3.25% milk. So just a little bit at a time and you'll see it'll like almost instantly thicken the roux. And you go again. And it's just really important that every time you add your milk, you stir this base until it's smoothed. No lumps. We might have to add extra milk, we'll see, just with that amount of flour that I added extra. And that's okay. So see how it looks like kind of weird right now? Just keep stirring and it'll come back together before we add the next set. Because if you leave those lumps in the sauce at this point, you're gonna have a lumpy sauce at the end. The flour will just like cook into these round little lumps and it will never smooth out. So then you'll see as well, like as you add more and more milk, it'll kind of cool down the mixture and it won't thicken as quickly. And then it's just on us to keep stirring it as it simmers so that we cook all of the starch out of the flour. Because now, like, I always try and think, like, the flour's gonna sink to the bottom of the pot, right? With the butter. But then as we cook it, it's gonna bind to the milk and stay all together. Just gonna get a little bit more milk out in case. Wipe my stove top a bit because I made a mess. And then at this point, we can go grab a little pinch of nutmeg, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm still just on a medium heat there. We don't wanna go any higher and scald the milk. A little pinch of ground nutmeg. Boop. Turmeric is like earthy and sweet. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah, definitely like earthy. You can't just say it tastes yellow. <laughs> That's not a descriptor. I don't know, it tastes yellow. <laughs> okay, stir that. I usually season with salt for this sauce at the end, but we can put a bit of pepper. 
might have to fill this up. I forget if I used them all. That's good enough, though. A lot of people don't like to put black pepper in bechamel because they're like, it should be white. But I like the flavor, so that's what I'm doing. Plus, it's, it's for us. Yes, yeah, Katniss. The one time you lick the turmeric off your finger, it tastes like when you accidentally lick dirt. It does have that flavor sometimes. It was an accident, Wayne, okay? Yeah, that is totally turmeric. Okay, two seconds. Here, I'll leave you guys on the stove and we'll just cut our cheese. What did I see? Two and a half cups of shredded, they said cheddar cheese, I'm gonna use marble. That should do it. Definitely wanna use like a nice creamy cheese. You don't wanna use like two cups of Parmesan. Black pepper is better than white pepper. Yes. The only time I really use white pepper is in like Asian cuisine. We need to stir this really quick before we shred our cheese. So you guys can see it's starting to thicken. I don't think I'm gonna have to add any more milk. And then yeah, you just let this simmer for like at least five minutes to cook out the starchy flavor from the flour. And you're basically good. You can turn it down a little bit now. What's the difference to Alfredo sauce? So Alfredo sauce is actually made with cream. It's not made in this way at all. Alfredo sauce has a base of like onions and garlic and stuff that you mix with whipping cream. Where this is like a thickened cream sauce that's made actually with milk, but it turns out creamy. This might be too much cheese, but that's not even allowed to be said. That's interesting, Frank. If you have too much nutmeg, you can have an allergic reaction. White pepper has like a mustardy floral flavor. Yeah. Nope, you didn't hear that. Didn't even say it, Greek. I don't know who said that. The ghost. <laughs> it's really giving her. Give it a stir. You can turn it down even more. It hasn't stuck at all to the bottom though. Make sure you go around the edges too. And that is honestly almost done. All we have to do is stir the cheese in. Bam. Cheese sauce. Your mom always complains that dad uses too much cream in his recipes. Does it like hurt her belly? I will say sometimes I suffer too, but like I know, I know going into it what's gonna happen. Yeah, add the cheese a little at a time to the sauce. It's always okay to have extra cheese, but it's definitely not okay to not have enough cheese. I like latkes. That sounds delicious. I can't believe it's already Hanukkah. Like what? Ouch. Don't grate yourself. And when you say ouch because you think something's gonna hurt, and it usually does, but I, I survived. It didn't get me. I ate that piece, by the way. If you're wondering. Mmm. You have to test the ingredients before you use them. I would say we have like a five cups worth of cheese here. That's a bit more than two and a half. 
<laughs> Oops. You do this for your Brocco Ched soup? Yes. Yeah, that is proper. I think there's like five cups worth of cheese. Oops. Like there's more cheese in my entire head. But anyways, we're not gonna add it yet. Put it on the side, I almost got too excited. We're gonna try this first. Just gonna grab a little spoon. We'll add some salt and then we'll mix the cheese in. And then we'll get like a boiling pot going as well as the oil for the chicken. It's been like such a chill stream. Mmm. You know it's good consistency when it just coats the spoon. Like I always feel bechamel kind of tastes sweet. From the milk before you add the salt. It always tastes like a sweet sauce to me. Especially with the nutmeg. Because I mean really it's just flour, butter, and milk other than the pepper. Mix this in. We're gonna season the water for our macaroni when we cook it, so it definitely shouldn't come out bland. But I'm gonna taste this now just to see what that added. That's good. I wouldn't add any more salt. Because you can always add more later. Okay, so now. Just stir that in. And yeah, I didn't, I forgot to mention that the flour starch flavor is also cooked out. Cause it's not gonna taste sweet unless that is cooked out. That's like one thing I've learned over the years. And then if this gets too thick, we can always add a small amount of just milk at the end. But it's always better to have like a sauce that's too thick because you can thin it out rather than a sauce that's like too thin. And then you gotta struggle to try and like thicken it somehow. This is looking so good though. That was about half of the cheese that I grated. I'll do one more handful and then we'll probably leave the rest. Yeah, yeah, you can always put more cheese on top just to like melt or even broil it on if that's what you like. And that's it. Look at that. I'll just pop a lid on this so it doesn't get too much of a film on top as it sits. But I always like to have this done ahead of time. So we can just stir the noodles into it. Don't worry, I did think about just hilariously making a box of Annie's today. But I didn't. I made it homemade for you guys. Okay, so definitely turn that off so you don't cook the cheese onto the bottom of the pot. That would be a very sad story. And then we'll just do this off of that burner to stay warm. And now, there we go. I'm just gonna wrap this up really quick and then we'll get a water pot on. And as well the oil pot, I suppose. So we are getting near to the end today. And then lastly, we just have to finish our chocolate layer on our dessert. Aw, Katniss. I love Annie's, but I love Annie more. So cute.
Ugh, when the cutter on the wrap doesn't really work on one side anymore. What's that about? Always pack your cheese up. Tidy in the fridge. So it doesn't dry out or get moldy. You know what next month is? The month of an entire new year. There's the cheese wrapped up nice and tight. Yeah, Sambo's leaving us again. Imagine living in 1621. What a time to be alive. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Okay, I'm just getting a pot of water. A medium pot with a lid. That's what we need. And we'll put lots of salt in it. Oh man. Next month, how many months you'll been sub for it? Actually, 69. That's amazing. That always makes me happy when I see that on other streams. <laughs> Whoa, I almost had too much water already. Thanks for the distraction. Okay, fill it like half up the pot. You gotta leave room for the displacement of the macaronis. There's that. I need more salt, that's why I'm leaving right now. We need the box to fill up my container again, but first, we always say just like make the pasta water taste like the sea. Make it taste salty like the ocean. And that way you won't have bland mac and cheese like how Katniss had it. So we're gonna turn that onto a medium high heat. Probably just a medium heat for now on the stove top. Let's fill up our container and then we'll pour the oil in the other one. And that's where we're at. Which means like almost done, really. That's easy. Did I make some macaroni from scratch? I don't have a pasta extruder. Otherwise, you know I would, Greek. Yeah, out of like all of the crazy appliances we have, that is the one that I don't have yet. I'm sure at some point in my life I will. Here's our noodles. This is what I got from the Italian market. Can you tell? So they're made with, I think, rice and corn. Gluten-free elbows number 160. Okay, this is what they say, because I've never had this brand before. It says, why choose this gluten-free pasta? I've always wanted to create a gluten-free pasta that could give you all of the pleasure and texture of a classic one. We select brown rice, yellow and white corn, strictly GMO-free, blend them with natural and ancient element steam. Whoa. Thanks to our lavorazione al vapore method, steam processing. We slowly obtain a soft balanced dough that we extrude through bronze dyes so that our pasta is more rough and bonds perfectly with the sauce. That's what we know. There's like six grams of protein per serving from this though, so that's pretty impressive. And it cooks in five minutes, so that's what it is. I also bought another version of gluten-free from this brand and I think it's like a chickpea pasta, fusilli. But yeah, I thought I would trust something that came like right from Italy. Cause I find like North American gluten-free things aren't always the best, especially when we go with pasta. 
I'm just gonna take a quick bathroom break. Also, my nose is running, so I wanna go blow it. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Maybe I'll leave you on the stove pot while I leave. Or stove top. Pot top, same thing. That's where we're working right now. I'll be right back. It's me, I returned. What is that emote? Jebasted? <laughs> That's actually hilarious. It's the jebated face on a turkey. <laughs> jebasted. Okay, I'm gonna put... I'm pretty sure this is like the one and a half cups worth of pasta that we need. I guess we can measure it out. But like, I hate cooking a, like, cooking most of the package and having, like, what, a small amount. So we're just gonna cook all of this. It is what it is. So we'll put that over there. And then this is our deep fryer. Stove top deep fryer. Back it up. Back it up. And we gotta add some oil into here. First, I'm gonna put this milk away because we don't need it. Need a sip of water too. <laughs> a man's face on a turkey. That's what it is. Jabasted. We're gonna pour our oil no more than halfway. This is a good way for me to use this up too, which is why I was excited to make this. The end of a seed oil era. We're just gonna use all of it, but I will keep this container. Sometimes you can reuse the oil a second time if you keep it nice and clean. There are times that we do that. Okay, so then now, this is on the back. I'm gonna turn this to a medium heat, and I'm gonna go grab a thermometer that reads the temperature of the oil. 5,000 turnips? We need some turnips to put in a truck, like 5,000. Why? We're turning it up? Okay. But why? What are you all up to? We don't want to turn it down. <laughs> so here's our thermometer. Shoot. It says candy or deep fry and fry. And then you just put it like to read in the center. And then you just want to make sure it doesn't hit the very bottom of the pot because then that's not an accurate reading. But yeah, that'll take about 30 minutes to heat that up. Come down a little bit more, because that looks kind of funny there. So in the meantime, we have to obviously cook our macaroni. We have to make our dredge for our fried chicken. So that's what I think we're gonna do next. There's not that much left. 
and to finish our chocolate layer on our healthier Twix bar. Back up, turn up truck, <laughs> Greek. That is definitely an Annie, it's okay. Okay, that macaroni, we're heating the oil, perfect. Remember I said the temperature on the oil, 325 to 350. Usually I go up to 350 Fahrenheit to start because when you put the chicken in, it's gonna kind of cool it off a bit. Okay. First things first, just checking on this desserty. It's almost completely firmed, so that's good. So I suppose I will work on that top layer of our Twix bar. So I'm just gonna put this in the microwave for like 30 seconds at a time until it goes nice and smooth and melted. So I'll grab a spatula while that's going. I didn't make any veggies today. I think that's okay though. I've been eating my fair share of vegetables. What's everyone else eating today? I didn't even ask that yet. You usually ask that so early. This is where we're at. Barely any melting happening. Go again. Leftover combo pizza, artfully reheated, yes. Yeah, you can actually reheat pizza really, really nicely if you take the time to do it. Where like, sometimes it's reheated pizza is almost better than the first day. You get the crust nice and crispy. A bulgur wheat salad niche, nice. That sounds healthy. Okay, that's where we're at right now. I think like 30 more seconds and then we're good. And we'll come over here and do our final layer so that maybe by the end of this stream, we can taste it. Chicken tamale pie? What? How do you make this? I've never heard of this in my life. That sounds good. Yeah, I've had a bulgur salad before too. And it's good with a vinaigrette, olive oil and lemon. Mish knows what she's doing. Okay, check this out. So we got gluten-free shortbread on the bottom for a crust. And then we made a peanut butter caramel with some maple syrup and such. Now we're doing our chocolate layer to finish off our better for you Twix bar. And we'll put that back in the freezer so this can set up. And then I think, yeah, by the time we're done our stream today, we should be able to actually cut a piece of this off. Am I gonna have to nuke this for like two more seconds? There's just a couple of lumps still. Might be able to smush them out though. I'm on a peanut butter chocolate kick, if you guys can't tell. Okay. The crust layer was like so thin compared to these other two layers. I'm hoping the peanut butter layer like kind of sealed up the crust because that layer looked a little bit dry. 
when I took it out of the oven. Oh, and then let's not forget, we gotta put on some flake salt on this layer. Just gonna move that up. Nice, even chocolatiness. And you're, if you're wondering why there's like so much parchment extra, it's so that we can easily take this out of the pan later when we go to cut it. Okay, so then now like sometimes this chocolate by the time we're done just looks like kind of messy like this, right? We can like go through, just do a swirl like that for like kind of a fancy look on it. Now I'm gonna grab the flake salt. Ooh, I got chocolate on myself. Oh no, eat it off. Oh yeah, the Reese's Christmas trees. Those are good too. Did you see all the other like snacky recipes I found this week? Sprinkle the salt flakes over it. Okay, chili seasoned pulled chicken topped with a layer of cornbread basically and then cheese. That's like the tamale casserole. Okay. Yes, please. That'd be so good to make for them up at camp. I think they'd crush that. I'm going like pretty ham on the salt here because there's some sweet layers. I forgot to like show you the salt, but this is the brand. This is like what every chef uses. I've had this box for a long time too. Should almost last your whole life. Okay, so that's gonna go in the freezer now to set up. Yeah, that's what it was called, the reindeer bait. I wanna try it too, Dust. Done. Another hard part on stream complete. I get to lick the spoon on this one, Greek. Are you even still with us going like half and half chocolate? It's like so sweet. Okay, so that is done. I'm just gonna pop this extra. Well, maybe I'll leave the cheese here because we want to like top the mac and cheese with some cheese later. I'll leave it there for now. Okay, then next one we'll make our dredge. So I did link a recipe, but it's not working. Like transferring through Twitch, my command. So let me just copy paste it really quick. Yeah, Greek, or don't do it. So there's our gluten-free fried chicken, which is actually like basically what we make every time with cornstarch. It just turns out so much more crispy. You don't even know until you try it. I'm surprised that it's still sweet too. Maybe it's just I'm not used to sweet things, right? Okay, so we brined our chicken in pickle brine instead of buttermilk. which we're still gonna get good flavor from, but it's not gonna be like quite as sticky, I guess, to get the thing, like the dry bits to stick onto there compared to buttermilk, I find like really creates this crusty layer. So I say for our breading, which they shouldn't call it breading because there's no breadcrumbs in it, it's a dredge. We learned this at the beginning of stream. We need, they say gluten-free all-purpose flour, but I was gonna do, what do you think, Sam? I was gonna do cornstarch and like tapioca flour or something. Rather than, I don't like the gluten-free flour, honestly. The blends that I buy, it's like gritty sometimes or grainy. So I'm gonna go with something that's like a really smooth. So we're gonna do cornstarch and tapioca. And then, yeah, I was saying like you can season your dredge with different spices. So they do 
garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, cayenne if you want it spicy, but we made our own buffalo sauce, so we're not gonna put cayenne in there. And then obviously salt. So what I'm gonna do, cornstarch, tapioca flour, and then I think I'm gonna bring over some Tony Satries, and we're just gonna mix that in to season it. And that's like it. And then we can add some salt onto the chicken once it's out of the oil. It's always a really good idea to salt anything that's deep fried right when it comes out of the oil, just to take that like richness right off of it from the fat. Okay, so our water for the macaroni is boiling. Should we just like cook it now? Should we just pop it in there, cook it now I'm thinking? It's okay if it sits a little bit of time out. It says five minute cook on the bag, so I'm definitely gonna go buy that since I've never cooked this variety of pasta before. And there's nothing worse than like overcooked noodles in a mac and cheese. Makes it like so mushy and a weird texture. So we definitely are going for more al dente here. Definitely give that a stir. Especially with like elbow noodles, I find they always try and stick together as soon as you pour it in the pot. Just do that for now. Okay, I'm going to grab those few dry goods. I'll be right back. Morning starch. Did we come up to a boil? Almost. Also watching this, so the oil's almost at 225 Fahrenheit. Let's do just this for now. We'll go quick. So this is our cornstarch and then tapioca starch. This is the brand that we have in Canada. Fleischmann's, they also make like yeast and stuff. And then our tapioca and then this is our seasoning which is hard to find in Canada too, our Tony Satchery's. What do I want to dredge this in? I think just like a shallow pan. A shallow baking dish. I don't love to have like too much of this stuff left over either, the mix. Cause like once it touches the raw chicken, you have to like keep it in the freezer because it can't just be stored at room temp. It'll go moldy. I'm going to take a peek at my noodles and give them a stir. So that was the cornstarch. That's like a cup and a half. cup and a half, and then maybe I'll just use an actual measuring cup for this. We'll do... Maybe we'll do more. We'll do like a full two cups of the cornstarch. And I was gonna do a third of a cup of the tapioca starch. It's all of these things, like cornstarch and tapioca, really get everywhere if you're not careful with them. I'm just gonna hold on to this measuring cup in case we need to mix up more. Then it's there for easy access. And all we gotta do is pour a bit of this in. 
this like has everything that we talked about in the recipe as far as seasoning goes. And then usually I just take like a spoon or even a fork is easy. And you just give this a little mix up. Usually whenever I use this spice, the Tony Satries, I always sneeze. Makes me laugh. The cayenne gets me. There's that. Let's check on our pasta. Meatball sandwich with beetroots and mayo on top. I'm intrigued by this. It's Scandinavian, right? Is that a Scandinavian thing? I'm looking at our noodlers. I'm gonna try one. Mm, almost. Really close. And I will say like the texture and flavor is really good on that. Holy, I am kind of shocked, honestly. That's gonna be good. Okay, and then in the meantime, I'm just getting the chicken ready in another container. Tony's on your eggs is so good. I don't think I've had Tony's on anything that was bad. Like Tony's on potatoes is really good too. It's a true Scandinavian thing. See, I'm learning. I know things. It's magical. Oh yeah, and we wanted to cut this up a little bit the chicken pieces before we fry them. I'm going over to those noodles in a moment here. Just taking the chicken bits out of the brine. Like I said, we did them in a pickle brine today rather than a buttermilk brine or crazy like that. A pickle juice brine. What is Scandinavian? What uh, Frank is having for a snack. <coughs> Bless you, everyone. Bless your souls. All of you with your sneezes today. Squeeze me. I'm just washing my hands, chat. And then we're gonna go and check on the noodles. I got chicken hands. Not allowed. Pretty sure I can tell by the way that the steam looks that this is done. Mm. Mm-hmm. A little bit of bite to it. I'm just going to put the lid on and strain them in the pot. You're not going to see this part because I'm doing it in the sink. But it's always important to strain your noodles right away. So that they don't overcook in the water and go mushy like I said. I don't think we're going to put them in the sauce just yet. The noodles, so maybe we'll just drizzle a little bit of oil in there. I don't want to put them back on this hot burner either. I'm just going to put it there. I know you guys can see me over there. But you would never even know that that's not gluten free. Holy smokes. I just have a squeeze bottle of oil. Here, I'll show you there. Do like a small drizzle just so they don't stick together in these next couple of minutes. Usually I just do that. So they're coated and you're good to go. I'll just pop the lid on.
Okay. You're heading out. Gonna catch a nap. Okay, have a wonderful nap. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Katniss. Okay, come on over here. This is where we're at. We made our dredge underneath, and then I just took the chicken out of the brine, put it in another pan. So I am going to, I think, just quickly take a boning knife, and we're just gonna separate the drumstick from the, the like back thigh piece that they gave us. And that's just so the chicken fries up more evenly. We'll do that on a cutting board. It would probably be the easiest. We'll just move the dredge over for now. You can really just pop it beside the hot oil if you want. That's where we're gonna be working right away. And then yeah, we know that chicken fries in about like anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes is what I like to give it. So then we know that we have that much time to like finish off everything else for the dinner, right? So we're gonna just separate them there. I know that that is where the drumstick separates from that other piece. Sometimes I have to dig the bone out to see where it is, the knuckle. It's like more up top, kind of. Like up there, there we go. Compared to like a thigh. So there's that. So this is like a back piece. I might even trim some of that stuff off. Even though like when those little bits get crispy with the skin and the fat, it's so good. You can just leave that on the side. We could always fry it up for like a little munchum snack. Yeah, this is what we were marinating. Holy, I just like cracked the bone myself. Sometimes you don't realize how strong you actually are. I would have rather had boneless skin on thighs, but there was none at the store when I went. So this is what I thought would be the other best option as far as like price point went. Like chicken has been so expensive lately. This has like some of the offal on it on this side still. That'll happen though when you have back pieces. They're honestly not my favorite. But at the end of the day, chicken is chicken. It looks really white. It was like in a pickle juice brine. So some of the acid will make it look really white like that. Yeah, good one, Josie. Compared to like doing it in the buttermilk, like how we usually do. Adam A5M2, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. I'm gonna leave that extra skin on because that's just goodness. Okay, just one left. Almost like a pre-cook. But then we can also say acid helps to like break things down and make them more like tender, kind of magical. So that's why we always do a brine on a chicken. I will say like buttermilk is definitely my favorite though. Okay, so there's all our pieces. Let's clean up this area. We got it a little bit gross. And then we're probably good to go to like dredge and start frying. And then right before the chicken's done, we just gotta mix the noodles in with the sauce and try it. Gotta wash my hands. I'll probably just wear some like gloves some kitchen gloves when I'm dredging the chicken so I don't have to wash my hands five billion times. Hello, Mr. Krabs. Yeah, skin is the most flavored because of the fat. You are right. Fat equals flavor. That's something we are taught. 
Boom. And yeah, is that why chicken breast is so bland? That and like, plus it doesn't really have a bone going throughout it. So that could also make it taste bland. Okay, how should I do this? The chicken there, over there, dredge it, over there. Sounds good. I'm just gonna wipe my board really quick with some soapy water. I'm still waiting for the oil to heat up anyways. You guys know I would be moving a lot quicker if that was at temp. Yeah, bones equals flavor and also nutrients. You might try the buttermilk, Josie. You could even make your own buttermilk at home. My mom taught me this when we were like baking once upon a time. Just mix some milk with a little bit of vinegar. Or lemon juice is also really nice for a flavor. Until it curdles a bit and you're good to go. Same, same, but different. I'm just gonna fill up my water. Okay, so we're just over the 325 mark, so it is it is uh, climbing in temp pretty quickly. Yeah, you can put the chicken in the brine up to 24 hours before you cook it. I don't like to go too much longer than that because it can either make it too salty if there's lots of salt in your brine or it'll like break down the meat and kind of make it like this mushy texture, which is weird. Okay, just grabbing some glovies. And our hot sauce is done and in the fridge. That was the other important part. Does the brine make it salty? It adds seasoning for sure. Like think about what's in a pickle brine. It is definitely salt and like peppercorns and then usually garlic and some other spices. And then same as if you're gonna use the buttermilk, I'll always add a bit of seasoning into that buttermilk. Not a lot, like a couple pinches of salt, that's it. You could even add some paprika if you wanna put some color into it but always a good idea at that point too. And sometimes I have to like tap this thermometer. It's a bit old, it gets sticky. But we're almost at 350. We're almost there. I haven't had fried chicken in a minute. Well, I haven't fried it for myself, I guess I should say. When you boil potatoes, they sometimes become weird consistency where they're uncooked, but like sweaty. You don't know why that happens. What do you mean? What are you trying to make with those potatoes? Couple more moments. No rushing it. Okay, I'm gonna just get some plates out for us. For this masterpiece afterwards. I'll do like a couple different plates. I'll even do a bowl for me. Just thinking how it'll look in there. It'll be really good. Okay. Everything is organized. Just boil them and eat them or maybe mash them? Hmm. Do you have a lid on the potatoes when you're cooking them? You might just be like boiling too much of the water out ahead of time and then they get gluey. No lid. I would use a lid. Even if it's popped like halfway off just to let the steam out so it doesn't boil over. And then maybe turn down your heat just a little bit. It's like go less of a boil, more of a simmer. Okay, are we ready, chat? Are we ready? I'm gonna fry, I think we'll do two drums and two back pieces first to get the boys done. 
and plate it, and then I'll do my last couple of pieces. But it's all about not overloading the pot, and I think it'll be smart if we only do like four pieces at a time maximum in there. Okay, none for Wayne then. You got it. Just for me and Sam. So this is how we're going to do this. Can you guys see? Not really. What if I back it up more? Still can't. What if I back it up more? Kind of? Okay, this is what I'm going to do instead. There we go. Drop it in there. Flip it over. If you need to, like pick up some of the dredge. Give it a little pat. Swirl around, flip it, make sure this side's all coated. Give it a press. I think I'm just gonna like leave it on the side for now because we want all four of these done and then we're gonna put them in. So next one. So everyone gets like almost a half chicken, let's say. Okay, so we always put the biggest pieces in first. Shake off your extra dredge. And then we'll kind of like give it a swirl. You'll see when I drop it in. Like hold it there for a moment or two. The gloves also help too. By not burning your uh, hand. No. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. It's kind of like creeping up the temp, but that's okay. See, this one got a little dark. Isn't that a nice thing? Like if you fry chicken and the skin gets too dark, you can always just finish it in the oven. Sorry I didn't fix the view for you guys, but at least you saw the first little bit of how this should be done. That pan's just like living in front of me. I'm just gonna grab some tongs. Okay. Yeah? Why? So yeah, nothing stuck on the bottom. I didn't set a timer, Chad. I forgot when I dropped in the first one. We can set one now, though. So now the heat's right in between 325 and 350. You can see how it cooled down because I actually had it almost at 375 when I started. I'm going to set a seven minute timer to check the temperature then. Dredge it! Gotta dredge the chimkin. We have like just the right amount of oil though. Phew, lucky ducks. That's pushing the limits. That is quite a nice sound though, I will say. That frying sound sounds really perfect.
Yeah, one thing I noticed just with this uh, pickle brine compared to a buttermilk brine, it's not gonna have like a thick, crispy sort of breading on it at the end. This is gonna be like more light style where it's more just like the chicken skin is gonna be very crisp rather than having a layer of like breading on there. You get nervous about breaking the yolk when you crack eggs? Oh yeah, Josie! You're always obsessed when Sam like cooked breakfast when he cracked the eggs. So funny. Okay, I'm gonna grab our hot sauce out so we don't forget. Homemade earlier. This is like frying like crazy. I love this sound. Our homemade buffalo sauce. There's a fruit fly in here that's been like bugging me all day. I'm gonna try and kill it. Just under five minutes and we'll check this. Nice, give it a little flippy if you want. It's looking good though. Not too dark, not too light. Like, holy. Cheese sauce is still warm in the pot, so that's good. You having fried rice and Vietnamese prawn rolls? Oh, he's the rice master? That sounds good. Maybe I'll turn this pot of cheese sauce just on like a low for when we mix in the noodles. Yes, yeah, that is a very good trap for fruit flies. I don't know if it's just because I was buying a lot of fresh fruit and they like come in with it or what, where they keep coming from. But yeah, they love apple cider vinegar. Poke some little holes in the plastic on top of the glass and they'll never get out. Evil. Okay, I got my Tony's back here because I think I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the chicken when it comes out. I'm going to go grab a wire rack to put on a sheet pan for the fried chicken to live on when it comes out of the oil. That way it doesn't get soggy on the bottom. No soggy bottoms allowed, thank you. That's what it is. Honestly looking good. With that. Put that back over. You know the chicken's almost done too? When like the bubbles really become less in the oil. When it simmers down, if you will. Yeah, the fruit flies, that's what I always assume too, is they're coming like from the store on your fruits. But I'm always very attentive to my fruit when I leave it on the counter. Like, I don't let anything go bad. Almost time to temp the chicken. One minute, 30 seconds. Perfect time to have a drink of water. Drosophila, word of the day, if you will, from Anisopteryx. Drosophila. Drosophila. 
Yes, yeah, the plastic covered berries. You know what we should just do with those when we buy them from the store is just put them right in the freezer. Fresh berries right in the freezer. Drosophila is fruit flies. That's the scientific term. Okay, I'm getting my thermometer. We're gonna tempt the chicken. That's the genus. <laughs> uh, so when we tempt chicken, I'm gonna go with this piece, I think. You wanna go by the bone and like the thickest part of it, right? Where it's gonna take the longest to cook. That's reading, did I see a 130? 134, 130. So we're at like 130 there. In the middle, we wanna go to like 165, I would say. I'm gonna move this over then. We have a little bit more to go. Eh, set another five minutes on there. It doesn't take too long to get up to temp once we're close. Five more minutes on that. In a couple moments, we'll mix some of the noodles into the cheese sauce for the boys. I might just do it in like a bowl on the side. And yeah, it seems like Suki is not gonna be able to make it to stream today, but we're thinking of her. A teacher you work with did her PhD on fruit flies. Okay, I would that'd be like something I would do. <laughs> Wait, the meaning of fruit flies means love and kindly? Get out of here with that. <laughs> I'm not believing it. No way, Jose. I'm gonna grab a spoon. Smells like fried chicken. Smells like fried chicken. Makes sense, honeydew. <laughs> honeydew list. Look at this stuff over here. The cheese sauce is looking pretty good, yep. Pretty ingenious to use the wire rack to rest your oily tools. It's just something that we do here, Annie. I don't know, that just ended up there. It just seemed like a good place, you're right. Thanks for noticing. I'm gonna do like one more flip before we take it out, just to make sure it's cooking evenly. Come in here. To me. Fried food will do that. It'll like try and congregate together. It's funny. Linguistics is actually pretty interesting, hey? Something we don't realize till we're older. Okay, I got a minute and a half left. It's happening. It might be time, hopefully. Obviously, fried chicken that comes out of the oil is really hot, so don't burn your face off when you go to eat it, hey?
Trying to see where these drummies are at, because I feel like they might be done earlier. No thermometer. 204. Okay, drummies are coming out. Hello. Gonna like try and poke straight in there. One sixty eight seven. 167, 168, I think we're Gucci gang. Look at that. And this was the first piece that went in. Oh look, my timer is literally going off on my watch. Temp this really quick. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna let the oil come back up to temp before we put the next ones in. How do I wanna do this? I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna pour some noodles. They're kinda stuck together, give me this spoon. Sometimes noodles will do that, but they'll come back apart. It's okay. Pour some noodles for the boyses. Into there. You guys can see me, right? In a sneaky back burner. Give them some of this cheese sauce that we made. We'll use this spoon. Holy, <laughs> that's thick. That's thick and rich, yeah? I still gotta try this with the sauce to see if we need any extra salt. <laughs> Whoa. Mmm. I don't think it needs anything. I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle of cheese on top. And we're good to go. Okay, come over here. No bacon crumble? No, there's no bacon today. We're on a, a health kick. <laughs> I know there's been bacon like every other stream. <laughs> Where's the bacon, Kate? Not today, chat. Not today. It's literally so thick I had to like add a bit of water. <laughs> Hello? Who's ready? A little pepper maybe? We put some pepper in the bechamel when we made it. I'll probably maybe garnish with it or I was thinking just a little bit more Tony Satchi's. On top, same with the chicken. Oil's only at 300 right now, so we're good there waiting. You always need a bit more cheese on top. Scoop. 
Scoots, it's good to see you. How are you? Okay, here's how these turned out. So the darkest one was the first one I put in, and that was when the oil was at like 400. Pretty high, but then it dropped to like 300, right? Everything cooled it off. You guys want your buffalo sauce on the side? I'll take the drizzle on top. Oh yeah, and then we always do same z's k, like on the chicken. Yeah. So we always season our deep fried stuff when it comes out. Yeah, we do. You do already have a utensil, and then our homemade hot sauce. Boys said on the chicken. We got the chicken and the macaroni. How is the menu command still work when I turned it off even? This is what we want to know together. Bob, thank you for the 29 months. Welcome. This is what we want to know together. It's Bob. He's here with us. Have you been lurking the whole time, Bob? I really sauced it for the boys, but Suki... You're not here with us today. I hope that you do watch this VOD over the streams for you. Buffalo chicken, mac and cheese. With homemade sauce. You need a utensil? Yes, please. Okay. In chat, we're gonna drop our chicken next. It's a good cheese -um. Okay, we're almost up at 325. So I'm gonna start dredging again then. I'll put on my gloves. We'll get the chicken coated in the stuffs and be ready to go. You need a smoke after that. <laughs> yeah, we're changing the name to meme elements, not stream elements. You went and did stuff? That's allowed. Why is it buffalo chicken? Can it not be Vancouver chicken? I suppose it could, Jimmy Jam. Maybe even EFC, Edmonton fried chicken. Is it okay, everyone? Oh, fuck yeah. Samo says F yeah? Wait, you're not eating with us. This is part of the stream. No, I need you here. We need him, right, chat? We need Samo. This isn't the same. It's okay, we forgot. We've been apart. BCFC, British Columbia fried chicken. You have one job. Scoot says, wait, is that a Samo? It is. So I don't know why he's hiding. Look, he is here. Drudge it. Drudge it. I don't have the right viewing though here. You'll just have to deal with this wonderful view instead. Of a full Samo munching his tasty bits. You love his eyebrows even? Good job, dearly. You got nice eyebrows. It's not a hologram. Nope. I picked up the precious cargo on Thursday night. He only teased me a little bit by almost not coming home. It's okay, the plane just had engine malfunction. It's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> but it is the real truth though of it. It's the truth of the matter. So the chicken is like juicy. It's flavored enough, Sambo. Good seasoning. The sauce is like good and flavorful, not too spicy in your face. Beautiful. I 
think I could fit all of this in here. I don't know, though. I don't want to push the limit, you know, chat? It's kind of scary when you do that. I think I'll only do the four pieces again, because it did cook really nice and evenly. Okay, the oil's at temp. What's up, dearly? There's two more pieces after this. So I drop the biggest pieces in first. Watch your face. Sometimes, like, the chicken skin kind of pops. Just as the steam's coming out. That's also why I love to wear these gloves. Still like steaming hot, Sambo. Whoa. You showed them the juices. A bone eating stream with your guys' favorite human. You're welcome. I'd be honored. We're cooking. Do you use gloves to handle chicken all the time? That used to be me. Yeah, when I was young, I couldn't touch any raw meat. My mom thought I was very weird. So I'm very proud of myself. I've come a long way over the years. I was peeking at dessert. Can't forget about that. Hey, okay, now our oil's chilling at 325. I'm gonna put 10 minutes on. Good work. Everything together was awesome. How did you feel about the gluten-free noodles? Can you even tell? They're honestly like that good, hey? Yep. So that's a good brand, chat. If you could find it, the boys didn't even know it was gluten free, suckers. They did because they heard me say it, but they wouldn't otherwise. That's pretty nuts. No gluten for you. It is scary. I always say that, McFarlane. Is I'm always scared to deep fry at home too, still. I hate it. It's one of my least favorite things. So yeah, it's not weird to be afraid to deep fry. The most important part is not putting too much oil in the vessel to start off. And then not overflowing it by putting too much into the oil either. I'm just putting a few things away as I'm waiting there. We're almost done. And then I will grab this cutting board on the way over because we have to still try our dessert. We gotta check to see if the chocolate is hardened. It is fully. Sambo's just getting into it. <laughs> you can put it anywhere, dearly. It's not gonna go back into there. Are you cutting it? You want the serrated knife? Sure. Do you want this plate still, maybe? Oh, yeah. Hey. I need at least one or two more pieces. Hey, that actually looks deadly. Yeah. That's oh, deadly, nice. too? Boys are happy. Okay, this is called a Better For You Twix Bar. 
We like worked on making some layers. Today it's gluten free. There's a coconut shortbread, a peanut butter caramel, and then a chocolate layer on top. Oh, and as well, the flake salt. You can't forget the flake salt to go with the chocolate. And then as far as like, okay, don't go any farther. No. It's too soft. Yeah. What was I, else was I gonna say? The old oil. So I saved the container from the oil and then I'll let it cool down just like in where we're frying it right now. There's the container. And then if it doesn't look too gross or dirty or dark, I will strain it out with like a fine mesh strainer. If you have like a coffee filter, that's helpful too for all the finer particles. And then you can either keep that oil or just put the lid on the oil jug and put it in the garbage. But oil never goes down the drain. Yeah, you can strain and reuse it. Okay, what do we got on here? Six minutes? Six moments? I was worried about the crust being dry. It looks pretty dry. We could have put more butter, Sambo. Nope, it doesn't need more butter? Nope. Dang, okay. Don't feel bad about caps, it's all right. Half of the time I can't even talk on stream. Don't worry, guys. But that's how it turned out. Holy. I don't know if he showed you a side view on it. That looks good. I'm excited to try that. It's melting in my hand. I think, yeah, as Sambo got like towards the middle, it wasn't quite set as much. Let's give this a flip. Only a couple more moments to go. And then I'll turn on our little pot with the sauce again. Heat that up. You need another plate or you're good now? You made deep fried brownies now? <laughs> Do it. I'm just putting things away while we're finishing up. I like to clean as I go, especially during stream. That way it's like not just an hour straight afterwards of trying to clean up the mess I just made. Deep fried brownies, you sickos. Whoa. We didn't need this anymore, right? Nope. It's just extra. Yep. It's extra. Eight. This is where our chimkin is at. I made a couple dishes today, but that's okay. That's why we have a dishwasher. We say thank you for your services. I'm just gonna do a side of this buffalo sauce, so I'm gonna pour that now. I'm a dipper. I'm a sauce dipper, I don't know about you guys. A lot of people like their buffalo things tossed with it. But I like when the skin is like crunchy. Chicken's still crunchy and you can like dip into it rather than the skin going soggy. Like that's how much sauce we already used today. Half of what we made. Dead left. You know what gets my goat? I'm using that phrase from now on, by the way. <laughs> you know what really gets my goat? <laughs> They invented deep fry snicker bar, not the Americans. I know. They're actually like legendary deep fryers over there. You didn't know Torino. 
<laughs> and you're welcome, Bad Rhymer. I'm happy to make your day. Okay, I'm going in here. We need to see what we're working with. I think the drummies are done. I'm gonna like hold it up. Make my life easy. Whoa, there's still blood coming out though. That's why like sometimes I'll cook it a bit more. I hate when that happens. How's this other one? Okay, we're getting close. Couple mooring moments. There's two minutes on the timer. I'm gonna switch that to a five minute timer. You're a sauce toss kind of person too. You kind of prefer a dry rub, yeah. Yeah, like I'm a salt and pepper chicken wing, but then I'll have like sauces on the side. I've never had the crazy deep fried butter though. That's in America. Has anyone in here had that? You want to? Of course you do. Sambo really wants to try it. We're not surprised. That chicken skin's getting kind of dark, but the oil's only at 3 hundo. We'll carry on. That's a thing at the Iowa State Fair, apparently. You've never had it, Dust? Don't even understand how it works. I think they must, like, freeze the butter. You'll try it once? Me too. I want to try it too. Your harderies? <laughs> My harderies are bad enough. Yeah, just a bite. We don't want to die. That could be a good way to go, though. Get, butter right now? Get out of here! This is what Sam says. Do you have butter right now? Okay, well, we Google it. See what you have to do first. I'm pretty sure you have to freeze it. Well, to be honest, sounds like he's a butter lover, anyways. How did you know? <laughs> he's a butter lover. We do love the butter here. There's something wrong if there's no butter in the fridge. I'm getting antsy. Can you tell I'm getting hungry? I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, those two are the best ways to go. Guy while eating. We were talking about that, I think, last weekend on stream of the book. I forget what the name of it is now. But a bunch of, like, famous chefs talk about what their last meal would be. Okay, I'm checking again. That one's Dunny. 172. That one is too. Look, there's still, still like bloody juice is coming out. And that is often why I will buy halal meat. These ones are not halal. One ninety. If you're unsure, you can stab it in a couple places. gonna take that one out because it's got to be done. Okay, I gotta let the oil come up and then I just have two more pieces to drop in. So now I'm gonna come over and start plating with you guys. Ta-da! Samo already cut. Look at it. He plated our Tix bar. That actually turned out, hey? Whoa. Okay, next. This was just on the burner. I'm just giving it a stir. 
We'll put a trivet underneath so we don't burn the cutting board. And then we'll stir our noodles in. And I'm gonna plate my stuff actually in this bowl. Gluten-free noodles. Made from, what the heck did they say? Brown rice. White and yellow corn. And one other thing? Or is that it? I think I'm just gonna do all of it. I'm just gonna go all of it. Good thing that we cooked all of that. Look, the timer is just going off. Perfect. It's true, I do have a butter emote. It's important stuff. That turned out. It really did. I mean, there's no complaints from the boys. You would get the ketchup, Torino. Anyone else in here, I'd be upset. You though, that's fine. Mmm. We seasoned everything so good. That's my pile. I can eat this. I can eat the mac and cheese. Do you know how crazy this is for me? Pretty nuts. Very exciting. Oh, are you coming for more? I can eat this. She can eat it. I can ah! eat it. Get the feta mish. It's a party. Okay, here's these. Da -da -da -da. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go both drumsticks. I'm like a drumstick kind of girl. I need some of that too, please. Thank you. We gotta season the chicken a little bit too. Don't forget the extra cheese. Just leave it. Thank you. You like gnawing on a turkey leg at the dinner table? That's always fun, yeah. If anyone's ever had like a tomahawk or something too. Beef steak. Okay, so my sauce is on the side. That's what we did. That's really bright right now. There you go. Hello. The sun must be setting. Fried chicken, buffalo sauce, mac and cheese, and then our desserty. That's it. We did it. I'm gonna take a photo really quick. It smells like a deep fryer in the whole house now. Funny how that happens. Yeah, better than smelling like fish. Someone smelled up the whole hallway like fish yesterday. It was bad. You love the plates? Thanks. For some reason, like fried chicken and mac and cheese always looks good in like a black plate or bowl. Don't ask me why that's the case. This photo is looking fabulous. Okay, I think we got it. Now I get to try it. my oil at 300 still almost at 325 taste this you'd invite yourself over i wish i had neighbors like that a lot of people in cities like don't talk to each other anymore it's all scary right oh strangers are terrifying but yeah i wish i had neighbors that i could feed that'd be so nice especially when like sam goes to work 
I might actually type something up and see if I can put it in the lobby. So I'm pretty sure there's like students and stuff and families that work where I could do meal prep for them. They come home, just throw something in the oven for like 30 minutes. Why are those noodles so good? I'm so happy I tried those. All we used was marble cheese today as well. Nothing crazy or fancy as far as cheeses go. Mm. It's not dry or bland by any means. And yeah, I haven't had something like this in a while, so it's like making me feel so happy. Okay, our chimkin. Obviously, it just came out of the oil and it's really hot. I'm gonna burn my face off, but let's see how we did. Usually, I'll just like pick it open. Holy! I think it's juicy. It just like juiced all over the pasta. That's like the weird nubbin off of the drumstick. Did you see that, Greek? Mmm! What? The pickle flavor is so good! It actually came through! It really did juice on the pasta. Juicy. Mmm! Angel Y2K, thank you for the follow. That's seriously so good. We used garlic dill pickle brine from Bix. I can't even take it apart, it's so hot. But the flavor... It's like perfectly seasoned. And then just a little bit of salt we put on the outside to finish. What? So yeah, if you've had buttermilk brine before, try pickle brine. Let me see if I can pick this off with the fork, because I really want to dunk it in the sauce. And yeah, we can also say, like, anytime you have chicken with the bones, you will sometimes get, like, a vein that wasn't bled properly. That's gonna try and put, like, blood onto things, and it might freak people out. But just know, like, every, like, animals have bones, and there's gonna be blood, but it doesn't mean it's not cooked. Okay, spicy bite. The sauce really mellowed out and came together. Just like lime right in your face. Mmm. Right off the bat, tangy lime, garlic. My mouth's not on fire, but it is spicy. <laughs> At least you didn't eat it in vain. Have I done the sugar trick with fried chicken? No, I don't need the sh I don't know the sugar trick. I didn't mean to say need. I meant to say didn't know about it. And thanks, White Dove. This is actually so delicious. Mmm. What? Let's see some mac and cheese afterwards. Cool down the palate. It really does. It's so creamy. That's delicious. Thank you, Suki, for requesting this. I'm gonna have one more bite chat, and then we're gonna finish up, and then we'll be back tomorrow. Don't worry. Look at how the sauce just coats that. It doesn't just like run right off. Mmm. Oh! After you finish frying the chicken, sprinkle some sugar on it. That sounds similar to... I've made this fried chicken before. It was like something tingly. I forget what it was called though. And we mixed, like, to finish it, it was salt and sugar and, like, Szechuan peppercorn and something else. 
And holy, was it good. Like just to have the bit of sweetness with the spiciness. I forget what it was called though, but man, was it good. Why not a salt sugar mixture? For sure you could. Yeah, that's like how I was saying. That's yummy guys, okay. Add a couple bites of that. Now let's pretend like we're finishing off the meal. Look how good those look. Ooh, when it slid towards the camera, it's like, just open up your mouth. Okay, fall inside there now. Let's see. Coconut shortbread, peanut butter caramel, chocolate. What could be bad with this? Honestly, nothing. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yummy. It really like sticks to the inside of your mouth. It makes you salivate. Mmm. Does it taste like mustard? No. Thanks for the follow storm silence. I like the nutty coconut layer. Like you can actually taste that. Because I didn't use coconut oil where they used it three times in the recipe. I just used butter instead. I didn't want it to taste too coconutty. Yeah, like the peanut butter caramel layer with the maple syrup really turned out. And now that the chocolate layer is on top of everything else, it doesn't taste sweet, which is awesome too. So I'm happy I made that. I will make that again for sure. Oh, yeah, what would go bad with the flake salt mustard? Yeah, you're right on that one. You are right. Okay, here is two recipes that I use today. Because our command wasn't working. And then we also have two recipes already in Discord, but there's no browser link for them. The one is the homemade buffalo sauce. It's typed up in PDF so you can print it out for yourself and use whenever you want. Just search for it. And then the other one, this Twix bar was actually from Instagram, a creator I follow. And I was like, that looks good. So it's posted in Discord as like a screenshot with the photo and then the instructions beside. Yes, that's right. Yeah, follow up from the last stream when we're like, mustard goes good with anything. When we made the honey mustard chicken and someone was like, but what about chocolate? Yeah, mustard and chocolate. <laughs> Maybe there's someone out there that can make some magic happen, but I don't know if I can do that. And the brand of pasta, okay, I threw the one package out. I don't want to dig in the bin but i'll go grab the other bag that i have of it bob you will love it i also got this version that's different this one is made of chickpeas and brown rice which we have to try in another stream i did change my name on youtube from cook with kate are you having a hard time finding me now i'm like redoing my youtube right now so it's called rummo is the brand and then the elbows that we had was brown rice and corn, I believe. Oh yeah, the name change was on purpose. You guys can get the Rummo brand, Mish. That's amazing then. I'm very excited to try this one. This one cooks in nine to 10 minutes, whereas the elbows only cooked in five. So you can see the difference that makes too. A Fuzili number 48. They make normal, not gluten-free pasta. Have you tried it, Mish? Samo's so good. Holy, your face is covered in hot sauce. Look at him, adorable. Oh yeah, and potato. But that's all that's in there. It's so good. Oh yeah, <laughs> Wayne died too. Everyone's dying, I killed them. He died, look what we did to him. We cooked too good. 
Killed the roommate. Killed the husband. <laughs> Look delicious. JK, how are you doing? Okay, I'm just looking for someone to go raid and then we will be back tomorrow. What, Taz has a snow cam up? I actually love that so much. I'd watch that all day if there was smooth jazz playing. What do we got? This looks fun. Chaotic good mage. Food of the year candidate. What is he cooking? Just turning my oil off so it doesn't get too hot. What else we got? Oh my gosh, there's really no one that I follow streaming right now. Hello, anyone? Put the beard in the dishwasher. Yeah, that's a full wash up I usually say to him. You're very welcome for the yummy stream. Okay, I'm gonna put this in. Wait, where did he go? Chaotic good mage, right? Thank you, Samo, for doing that. Chaotic good mage. That's where we're going. And we'll be back tomorrow, friends. We're going to build a real charcuterie board tomorrow. I think we're going to go maybe for a walk like now. Since it's still semi-light out and I have a bodyguard now, I can walk after dark. We're going to go to the Italian market and get some meats and cheeses. And then tomorrow, we're going to build a yummy charcuterie because Samo wants some of that in his life. Same with me. And we're going to build a Lego Christmas tree. What? So we're getting festive again for a Sunday. Okay, chaotic good mage. We did it. I know, more Lego. I'm so excited to build that set. Friends, this was a lovely stream, like four hours together. Thank you for hanging out with us. Just taking time out of your day to be here. And hopefully we taught you something new inspired you to spread the deliciousness. Maybe even create it for yourself or others because sharing is caring. And other than that, yeah, I'm gonna finish the rest of my food. Sam was finishing those last couple pieces of chicken. We're gonna clean up and we'll see y'all tomorrow. 11 a.m. Pacific is when our streams start on the weekends as well as Fridays. And I hope to see you then. Thank you for crushing my sub goal today, 15 out of 10. We got a lot of bits donated too for our solar truck fund. So thank you guys, whoever contributed to that. Other than that, let's go see Chaotic Good Mage. I don't really know what he's doing, but it is intriguing to me. So let's go spread the deliciousness. Okay, I'm gonna hit that button. Love y'all, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.